The Broncos are the reigning champions of professional football. And in this city of Denver, the football messiah is quarterback John Elway. He had lots of help in last January's Super Bowl win over the Green Bay Packers. The game's most valuable player, Terrell Davis, scored three touchdowns. But the Broncos' masterpiece of the season was symbolized by John Elway's fiery competitiveness. Elway can run inside the 10. Head first. He flies inside the five-yard line. In his 15th season in the NFL, John Elway had finally won a Super Bowl. He delivered a championship to a franchise that had never won a world title. Tonight, though, a new season begins. I think it'll be different because being world champs, everybody's going to be shooting at us. And uh, we're going to have to be uh, play our best football week in and week out because we're going to get everybody else the best game and, and uh, we're not going to sneak up on anybody. John Elway is a Super Bowl champion. The Hall of Fame awaits. And tonight, the Denver Broncos begin their title defense against the New England Patriots. It's a matchup of two of the AFC's best. On the season premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football. And it's a beautiful early evening in the Rockies. Temperature in Denver today got into the 90s for the last three decades. A familiar sight, a sold out Mile High Stadium and welcome to year 29 of Monday Night Football. Al Michaels with Dan Deardorff and Boomer Esiason. We have a great schedule this season. It begins tonight with the Patriots who won the AFC East and then a wild card game hoping to go farther this year against the world champion Denver Broncos. And the Patriots tonight will try to not only beat John Elway and beat Terrell Davis and beat a good defense but beat the toughest home field advantage probably in sports. The Broncos haven't lost a regular season game here since 1990. They've won their last 16 regular season games, and the average margin of victory in those 16 games has been 18 points. New England and Denver from the Mile High City will kick it off when we come back. ABC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Another new member of our crew this year. Great to have with us and working the sidelines, Leslie Visser. Hi, Leslie. Thank you very much, Al. Really glad to be here. Mike, you've beaten them 10 straight times in a row. You're the world champion. What kind of a test is this for your reshuffled offensive line? Well, they're a great football team. We lost two good players in Brian Abebe and Gary Zimmerman, but our offensive line's playing with a lot of confidence. I think our players will come in and play well. And what about on defense? You've done really well against Drew Bledsoe. Where they're a little uncertain at running back, must you get great pressure on him? Well, that's part of our defensive scheme. We try to play sound defense, and at, at times we'll try to put some pressure on them and try to keep them off balance. Well, you still have a quarterback who doesn't look 38 years old. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Back to you, Al. Thank you, Leslie. Mike Shanahan, the recipient recently of a contract extension that makes him the highest paid coach in the National Football League. Adam Vinatieri will kick off. Denver will get the ball first. Derek Lavelle, who is the backup running back to Terrell Davis, is back to receive. Former Seahawk, former 49er. They're stopping their feet. More than 75,000 at mile high, and we're underway as the Broncos defend their crown. Lavelle takes it two yards in the end zone and brings it back up to the 18-yard line. Tackled there by Wiggum. John Elway, some question as to whether he would return, made his official decision in early June. The numbers, of course, will send him to Canton on the first ballot. Terrell Davis behind him, their primary running back and Super Bowl MVP. Griffith is the blocker, Smith and McCaffrey outside, and Sharp is the tight end. Jones, Schlereth, Nalen, Neal, and Swain up front. Shanahan, an offensive genius. He's had eight months to prepare for the opening drive. First play is restricted. Elway on first down from the 18, faking, looking, McCaffrey trying to go long and deep, and he gets free, and McCaffrey stretches out to make the catch. Had he caught it in stride, it would have been a touchdown, but he had a lunge for it, and down he went. So they go to the bomb immediately. One thing they didn't want, New England didn't want right there, Al, was a big play right off the bat. They have to fight to keep Denver in the pocket. And that time, Chris Canty got burned by McCaffrey. A good throw by John Elway. Boomer, this all comes from the fact that Mike Shanahan figures that New England would overplay Terrell Davis. Averaged almost five yards a carry against the Patriots last year. Play action, the very first play of the game, and look at the result. 
from the 38-yard line out of a split-back set. Now they send Griffith in motion. And again, the fake to Davis, who's decoyed on the first two plays. Throw underneath, and it's caught for a short gain at the 34. Shannon Sharp, the Pro Bowl tight end, stopped by Chris Slade. Let's take a look now at the New England defense, the strength of their team. Collins, Eaton makes his first start. Thomas and McGinnis up front, Eaton the new tackle. Slade, Ted Johnson, the recipient of a huge contract in Collins. And then Law and Canty of the corners, Malloy and Clay of the safeties. The guy they figure to pick on, of course, is Canty. Last year number one draft choice the other three superb veterans second down and five from the 33 yard line on the game's opening drive now davis his first carry of the year and he takes a hard hit from Farrah Collins as he crosses the 35 and it will set up a third down and about four now i was talking to todd collins yesterday and i said hey todd what do you have to do obviously to slow down terrell davis and what we're going to see tonight is we're going to see eight men in the box around the ball they have to they have to run after Davis. They have to do a good job of backside pursuit, Dan. Well, Davis is a cutback runner, as you know, Boomer. That is the way you play a cutback runner, just the way Collins did there. Stay in your gap, slide the shoulder in him. That was a heck of a hit. Davis lost a yard, third and five. As Elway retreats, under some pressure, but steps up and then guns it, threads it, but incomplete at the 24-yard line. Good coverage. Shannon Sharp reached for it, almost held on, covered by Ted Johnson. And an outstanding recovery by the New England defense after giving up the big play. On the road, they gathered themselves, and they came up with three successful plays against the Denver offense. And on fourth down now, as it's clear that Sharp didn't have it, we're at 5,280 feet, and so Jason Elam will attempt a 53-yard field goal. He's 14 of 24 in his career from 50-plus, and he's now 15 of 25. Jason Elam, who has scored more points over the last five years than anybody in the National Football League, breaks the ice early. Denver three, New England nothing. What a beautiful shot, Mile High Stadium. It's been the home of the Broncos since they came into the American Football League with the vertical socks in 1960. They hope to have a new stadium in place right after the turn of the century, i.e. about three years. And NFL historians might argue they might have been the ugliest uniforms in the history of football. No argument. They were really bad. They were. <laughs> Jason Elam, who just kicked a 53-yard field goal, sends this one skyward. And Derek Colors hauls it in at the goal line. And Colors, who is their third down back, and return specialist breaks one. He's in the Bronco territory. Elam slows him up. And then finally, he is tackled by Torrey James. And so the Patriots, with Dante Scarnecchia, their special teams coach, answering the Denver field goal with a 68-yard run back by Derek Cullors. Now Drew Bledsoe, the first guy picked in the draft in 1993. Tonight opposing in Elway, the first guy picked in 83. And behind him, Shaw starts, Carter the ex-bear. Jefferson and Glenn the wideouts. Glenn can fly. Coates, all pro tight end. Up front, they have an offensive line, Armstrong Lane, Willibar, Rucci, and Moss that has been together for quite some time. Today, by the way, Bruce Armstrong's 33rd birthday. The left tackle, and the first pass is dropped as they go to the air and Terry Glenn who had a fabulous rookie year two years ago didn't look the ball all the way in and left it on the grass it'll be second down now the Denver defense Neil Smith the longtime ex-chief with trailer price their number one pick last year and Tanavasa up front Mobley Cadrez replaces the departed Allen Aldridge in the middle and Romanowski Crockett Gordon Eric Brown a rookie and Steve Atwater Brown out of Mississippi State spelling the veteran Tyrone Braxton Second down and 10 as Bledsoe buys a lot of time and then hits Troy Brown inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. It'll be third down and about five. So much for the running game, guys. Both teams are coming out throwing the football. And really, Terry Glenn dropped the ball in the first play out of the series. He has to be a big part of this offense. And now with Derek, uh, with uh, Ben Coates down, now this will certainly alter the passing game of the, of the Patriots, especially if he can't get back. 
So Ben Coates giving Pete Carroll a nervous moment. There's Ben Coates on the Patriots sideline. He's up and moving around, and it looks like he's going to come back into the football game. Right in the middle of your screen, number 94, Keith Trailer makes the hit, and then he falls right there. Inside the 19-yard line, it's complete. The play is over. Troy Brown makes the catch, and it is a first down. Ball came loose after he hit the ground. And talking to Drew Bledsoe before the game, he said that he's really starting to feel comfortable in Ernie Zampezi's offense. He's excited about his receivers. And I'll tell you what, looking at the way the New England Patriots are starting this game, they are playing aggressive, guys. They are not backing down from the Broncos. And Ben Coates is back in the game, so he was out only a play, first down. At the 20 yard line. Glenn to the left, and now Brown comes in motion from the outside. And on the ground, this is Cedric Shaw. He picks up two. Shaw is a guy who was with them last year. He is Iowa's all time leading ground gainer. However, he did not carry the ball at all in the regular season. He only carried the ball in the playoffs when they beat Miami and wound up losing to Pittsburgh. There is Robert Edwards, their number one draft choice out of Georgia. We will see a lot of Robert tonight who didn't play that much because of a groin pull in preseason. Right now, the Patriots have to be real careful. They have too many men on the field, and now they throw a flag There's a 12. on it. 12 men on the field. You can't do that. Jerry Markwright is the official. Illegal substitution foul. 12 men in the huddle. Offense. This is Five yard penalty. Second down. This is an adjustment the National Football League has made this year in 1998. You cannot have that 12th guy come into the huddle without someone leaving immediately. And the Patriots get flagged for it right off the bat. And boy, it's tough to give up five yards when you're at this end of the field. And it would figure the 12th guy would be a rookie in his first game. Second down and 14, it was Rutledge who came in as the 12th man. Second down and 14. Denver ahead, three to nothing. Shaw escapes a tackle in the backfield and then pays the price as he picks up about two. Trevor Price, talking about paying the price, made the stop. Price, their number one pick out of Clemson last year. There's defensive coordinator Greg Robinson. The Patriots and Dan and Boomer, of course, talked about it on that Monday Night Blast. There they are. The All of the rushers on that roster, and in, amazingly enough, there is only one guy on the active roster for New England who has ever scored a touchdown, and that's the punter, Tom Tupa, who scored it when he played with Arizona in 91. He was a quarterback. I asked him about it before the game. He said, I have no recollection of it. Third down and 13. Let's go. Going to the end zone in the back of the end zone, but out of bounds after he made the catch was Terry Glenn. What a job by Drew Bledsoe of staying alive. Boomer doesn't get any better of hanging in the pocket. He takes a hit and still is able to find Terry Glenn. Almost a spectacular play. Really, when you take a look at this pass protection, Jeff, Jeff Ross Moss does a good job of pushing Neil Smith around the corner. Drew does a good job of stepping up and throwing the ball. And he bought a little time, and that was close right there. It was close, but he was out. Now a 40-yard field goal for Adam Vinatieri in this mile-high air. It is long enough, but it is it. wide. Left it off to the right. And so with 9.22 left in the opening quarter, Pete Carroll's Patriots still trail the world champions 3-0. What a sight. The sun doesn't go down here for another hour or so. So in the twilight, downtown Denver in the background, back into Mile High Stadium, Bledsoe watching his Vinatieri missed the field goal, and now Elway takes over at the 30-yard line as the Broncos have it for the second time in the game. And they use Davis as a decoy again and hit McCaffrey underneath for a gain of three. Chris Canty making the tackle. It'll be second down and seven. Now give Mike Shanahan a lot of credit devising this offensive game plan at the beginning of the game. He's been reading all week about how New England is saying they got to stop Terrell Davis, stop Terrell Davis. And right out of the shoot, there's four play action passes. These are the things that help John Elway be successful, especially later on in his career like this. Before this night is done, though, Boomer, to beat the Broncos, they will have to stop Terrell Davis. Second down and seven. 
And they stop him after a gain of three here. It'll be third down and four. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. Norelco, for an unexpectedly close shave, put it to the test. AT&T, it's all within your reach. And Claritin. We've been coming to this venue for a lot of years, and it never fails to excite being at Mile High Stadium for a football game. It is absolutely electric. Where sound has feel. Yes, it does. Third down and four, and L.A. has it batted away. Nice play by Todd Collins coming in from the left outside linebacker spot to set up a punting situation. You know, sometimes a batted ball is a good, a good play for a quarterback because right here the ball could have been picked off and run back by Willie Clay. So in that, in that instance, it actually takes away from a potential interception and a touchdown against John. Tom ruined to punt. And Troy Brown is back to receive it. Don't hold, don't hold! Low liner. And Brown makes the catch, and a great tackle is made as he made the catch at the 20-yard line. Tito Paul, good special teams play, came in to knock him down. 7.57 left in the opening quarter in the opener. And for three, New England nothing. Back in Denver, the Broncos opening up at Mile High Stadium. They will face the Dallas Cowboys here next Sunday. New England goes home, their home opener against Indianapolis next Sunday night in Foxborough. From the 19-yard line, first down for the Patriots. Like so, an offensive line does its job. Flag is down, but the Denver secondary also did its job, and he goes out of bounds, knocked out by Steve Atwater. Not one guy you want to be hit by when you're a quarterback. I used to see him coming at me. I'm down. Yeah, that's <laughs> two guys on a collision course at the marker, but you know this is going to come back. Holding number 68, offense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Back looks like lane. Looks like uh, Drew is uh, lumbering here a little bit. You wonder why how or how he could be the leading rusher on the Patriots looking at this thing of beauty. Well, he just padded his total, or he would have if it wouldn't have been for this penalty. It's a shame. Drew wastes an awful lot of energy and a tremendous effort racing Atwater there to the chain. But now, the worst situation in football. First and 20 at mile high. This is not easy. Well, they get a break because of half the distance. It's only first and 19 <laughs> from the nine-yard line. Cedric Shaw. Gets a yard, maybe a yard and a half, as Glenn Cadrez, the middle linebacker, the guy taking Allen Aldridge's place. Aldridge opted to sign with Detroit, makes the stop. Down here, you have to be really careful as an offense. You know, communication is really tough. The guys can hardly hear you. They're usually going on the snap of the ball. You have to make sure that your decisions are quick and decisive. The noise is such a big factor here in this stadium, guys. Second down and 19 from the 10. A little under seven minutes to play in the opening quarter. Broncos leading 3-0. Big draw, but the pressure from Bill Romanowski with the blitz from the outside. Your outside people who are trying to block the outside defensive ends and linebackers have such a hard time hearing they get off the ball late. Your guys outside, here they come, and they're flying around the corner. Zephyrus Moss is the right tackle, and Boomer, your point is right on. He's late trying to get out and pick up Romanowski, and you blame that on the crowd. And you know Pete Carroll just lectured his team over and over. We can't make mistakes early, and offensively, that's all the Patriots have done so far. Timeout, New England. Broncos with a big edge in total yardage. Remember, they started with a bomb on the game's first play. Now they have backed New England up at its two-yard line. It's third and 27 against the three-man front. They figure to try to give their punters some room here after the timeout. 
And they will keep it on the ground. They do give him some room, and Cedric Shaw takes it out to the 14. So they look to give Tupa some room, not to back them up to the back line of the end zone. They accomplished that. And, and that was just yardage given by the Denver defense. With only the three-man front, not a linebacker within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage, that's a concession by Denver. We'll let, we'll let you get a little room for your putter, but you will punt. Good smart play by the Patriots. It's all about field position when you're on the road. You want to give your punter a chance and your defense a chance. Darian Gordon has the highest punt return average in the history of the National Go Football on. League. And Tupa with a tremendous kick. Not only long, not only was it long, but it was angled. A flag goes down, I think maybe to indicate where the ball went out of bounds. Well, he, he threw a flag, then his hat. I think maybe he wanted to throw his hat, then a flag. Right. Well, we'll see here. The One line the judge <laughs> with Jerry Markwright, the referee. What a great punt by Tom Tupa, though. I mean, every special teams coach in the league wants to see their punters kick it deep and on the sideline. Let's take a look here about what the penalty is. Well, they forced. You can't hit him out of bounds. That's Larry Wiggum. Larry Wiggum, who's the, the Pro Bowl special teamer from the AFC. You can see Tyrone Braxton reacting to the flag. Unsportsmanlike conduct foul, number 25, kicking team, went out of bounds and remained out of bounds. 15-yard huh. penalty from the previous spot. Now, Fourth I, down. I know that sounds strange, but when you are forced out of bounds, you must make every effort to immediately get back into the field of play. There is Larry Wiggum, well out of bounds, and he's just rolling right on down the sidelines. And in the view of the official, made no effort to get back into field of play. You know, Tyrone Braxton actually thinks it's against him. Yeah, at that point, you're right. He kind of put up his arms and right. protested and said, well, I didn't do anything. So now the Patriots have had another miscue. Well, that's a very costly one because Tupa's punt was 64 yards. Out of bounds with no return. Yes. With a, that's net. What a waste to squander a punt like that. What happens down here now, guys, is that your punt protection team is saying, hey, we got to block first. We can't take off right away. Obviously, they can't leap until they hear the thud of the ball, but really it's going to be even more important that they play conservative and they stay in there. The other thing they're saying, having to do this twice in a row, there's not much air up here. <laughs> Tupa again. This is a wobbly kick that bounces at the 49 and comes back the other way and is down in New England territory at the 49-yard line by Derek Cullors. That was a 42-yard punt. So 26 plus the penalty, it cost them 31 yards. A reminder from executive producer Chris Rock, a new comedy starring Daryl Ugly. He's Archie Bunker and George Jefferson rolled into one. They tell us it's called The Ugly's. It premieres September 22nd on ABC. This is exactly the recipe for success for the Broncos. Almost in every one of their home games, it's, it goes a lot like this with the other team. At the 42-yard line, Brandon Mitchell blew Terrell Davis over and comes in for the sack. Brandon Mitchell, their second pick last year out of Texas A&M and a backup to Henry Thomas. Well, he's in a defensive tackle and looked like Tom Nail in the center was a little late trying to get over there. Mitchell's the second guy in there from the right. Look at him crash in. Nail and not able to get him, and, and Terrell Davis too late to react back, and John Elway had no chance at all. That was not Davis's responsibility primarily. That was an O-line mistake. Mitchell's first career sack. Elway got a lot of room to roll, but opts to throw to the wide open Justin Armour, who takes it to the 35-yard line where he's tackled by Larry Wiggum, and it's a first down. This is what happens when teams play man coverage in long down situations. The receivers run down the field. There is no pass rush. John steps up. He's so aware. He keeps his eyes open downfield looking for open receivers. And once the cornerback leaves the receiver, he drops it off. That's why he's been around for 16 years, guys, to improvise. And that's why everybody in this neck of the woods is glad he came back. 23-yard gain, first down at the 35 of New England. Here's Davis. And Terrell just keeps those legs churning. Should have been stopped for a two-yard gain. Instead, turns it into a five-yard gain before McGinnis finally sits on him. 
and and that's the type of a run that demoralizes a defense you have him for a couple look at that almost a five yard per carry average 4.7 and the thing about Terrell Davis, unlike a Barry Sanders, Terrell does not gamble. He seldom, if ever, you loses yardage. He is a very conservative, always going forward running back. Second and five. Davis threading his way, picking and poking and looking and picks up two, stopped by Malloy and Johnson. You take a look at the way Davis runs the ball a lot of times, he will run front side, and then he'll pick and choose his holes, and he will, he's not afraid to cut back, as we see there, but again, they talked about how the backside pursuit is key to stopping Terrell Davis. Well, the Patriots made a stand the last time they were down here forcing a Denver field goal. Third and about three, and right now Steve Sidwell, their defensive coordinator. Do I gamble with a blitz, or do I sit back? Empty backfield, Davis out of the game. Four receivers are in. Elway stepping up, picks up the first down, dives to the 16-yard line. And, and Boomer, you know when John Elway saw only a three-man rush and only needing three yards for a first down, this is always an option in his mind. And he also could tell by when he gets up there what kind of defense that they are playing in the secondary. He knows that the cornerbacks are locked up on his receivers. So when they all take up, you see 54 running with McCaffrey. Right now, John knows that there's nobody in the middle of the field. And third and four, third and three, that's an easy, that's a gimme for him. Uh, I just don't know how you can come with a three-man rush and nobody in the middle when you only need three for first down from the 15 back to the ground back to Davis Terrell picks up three gets it to the 12 with a little bit more than two minutes and there is Steve Sidwell the longtime aide de camp for Jim Mora with the New Orleans Saints and one of the best defensive coordinators in football and talking to him before the game he acknowledges that this is the best running scheme he has seen in the National Football League the one employed by Mike Shanahan and the Denver Broncos they account for everybody and put a hat on everybody on on every single play. Second down and eight. Elway into the end zone and wide open for the touchdown is Shannon Sharp. This is a terrific play by John Elway. He looks off to his right, moves the safeties with his eyes, comes back with the great poise that he has, and just lofts it to a wide open Shannon Sharp. To take a look here, he looks to his right, pumps, and then comes back. And by that time, the free safety is out of position. Jason Elam to tack on the point after. Good looking drive. Using his weapons, and when you have weapons like that, well, use them all. Sharp and Davis. Well, this, this is part of the responsibility of a quarterback to manage his position, guys, to look guys off. He knows where he's going when he gets up to the line of scrimmage. He's able to anticipate. And you tell me that the fire and the passion isn't still in number seven's heart. I tell you it is when I see that. John Elway has now thrown 168 touchdown passes in this stadium. That is the most thrown by any one player at any one stadium. John Unitas would be second. John threw 163 at Old Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. I think back to Pete Carroll last night talking to us about how he was going to address his team last night and he was going to say guys we need to be standing after that first wave of energy sweeps over us at mile high stadium you know they're going to come out fast you know that the crowd is going to take us out of our game a little bit well i'm not sure that they're standing after that first wave they, they might be kneeling but right now they must compose themselves and just First down at a time, just try to crawl back into this thing. If I'm Drew Bledsoe, I'm telling my teammates we have to answer right now. Yeah. Pete Carroll clearly hoping the sun will not be setting this early <laughs> on the New England That's Patriots. Cool. Down 10 zip. As a one hopper by Elam is dropped and then picked up at the seven yard line. This is Derek Cullors who had the big opening the run back and he's off the races again as he turns it back at the 40 and gets taken down at the 48 yard line so Derek Cullors with Rick Dennison looking on in disgust the Denver special teams coach and Dante Skarnecchia happy about his unit 
sending it out toward midfield. Here's a reminder coming up on Sunday Night Football on ESPN. You'll see Bledsoe again pass it home against Indianapolis and Peyton Manning. And we take our act next Monday night to Washington. The San Francisco 49ers coming off that thrilling overtime win against the Jets yesterday, led by Steve Young and Garrison Hurst against the Redskins on Monday Night Football next week, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Thank goodness for Derek Colors, guys. Well, Robert Edwards is now in the game. We'll look at their number one draft choice, the rookie from Georgia. His first ever carry is through a massive hole, and he takes it to the 38, and Robert can only pray that he'll see a lot of those types of holes in his long and what he hopes to be illustrious career. Wow. <laughs> that, that is as big a hole as you will see. LeVette, per, LeVette Purnell, look at him, get a lead block there, the backup tight end. Max Lane, Woolabaugh, Rucci, and Moss. Boy, did they just explode the Denver defense out of the way. It's all downhill from here, Robert. So Edwards' first carry ever is for 15 yards, and his second carry isn't a bad one either. That's for about six as he takes it to the 32-yard line. And let's go to Leslie Visser. Leslie. Well, you and Boomer and Dan have been talking about can Drew Bledsoe adjust to Ernie Zampese's timing offense. Well, he played in the same system at Walla Walla High School for his father, <laughs> Mac Bledsoe. Mac, what looks familiar? Well, we did a lot of that timing stuff, too. Drew's two receivers, Andy Jamison and Mike Gonzalez, we would get a stop, I mean, a whistle out. When Drew would hit his third step or his fifth step, we'd blow the whistle. So they had a clock going in their head and know when to, when to make their break. Well, looks like he's adjusting to it. Thank you, Mac. Back to you, Al. Thank you, Leslie. Mack looks like he's looking for the nearest rodeo. Bledsoe drops the ball and picks it up and gets tackled at the 32-yard line. It'll be third down and three as the quarter ends here in Denver. At the end of one, it's the Broncos 10 and the Patriots nothing, and we'll return to Denver with Monday Night Football after this message and a word from our ABC stations. And we're back in Denver. Al Michaels with Dan Deardorff, Boomer Esiason, and Leslie Visser as we begin our 29th season of Monday Night Football. As play resumes, second quarter commences with a third and four for the Patriots at the Bronco 32. Denver leading 10 to nothing. What? Bledsoe fires in traffic, juggled and caught by Ben Coates, who was shaken up early in the game, came out for a play, and one of the reasons he winds up in Honolulu all the time are plays like that. This is when your big players have to step up third and four. This could be the play of the game for the Patriots this early in the game. They have to get some points, and right now Bledsoe actually fires it into Ben Coates and throws it to his back shoulder, and Ben does a great job of concentrating on the football. I think great is a good enough word. It really is. Look at that. Look at that. What a terrific play. You won't see it any better than staying with it than that. First down at the 23-yard line. And they give it to Robert Edwards, the number one draft choice out of Georgia, takes it to the 20-yard line, gain of three. Our 29th year of Monday Night Football, and an official welcome to one, Norman <laughs> Boomer okay, okay, uh, Esiason. You know what? I'm going to tell you no, something. I'm, I'm glad I'm here. You know, seven quarterbacks got hurt yesterday. Yes. <laughs> you better <laughs> believe it. You guys going to take good care of me, aren't you? You notice he took, the, he took notice of all the broken fingers and every Achilles. Concussions. And, you know, yeah, oh, forget that. When, well, you, when you saw that, the withdrawal symptoms didn't last very long, did they? But nobody called me either. I figured maybe somebody might call me. Mind your manners or a concussion's not out of the question up here either. Not second, for second down and seven from the 20. Pressure by Smith, and that creates the errant Bledsoe pass as it's underthrown. It's well, really difficult to, to fool a guy like Neil Smith. They try to, they try to fake the, the run to the left. This is called a bootleg, and really a naked bootleg, meaning that the quarterback's coming out by himself naked. And look at this. I mean, you're not going to fool a veteran of Neil Smith's stature. That's not a play that I would be running down here. I think you have to sell it better than that. If you're if you're going to sell the bootleg, you better have had a lot of success running the football, and it better be a hard driving fake. Third and seven, Bledsoe out of the gun. Good protection, and the pass is a little low and not caught at the 12. Troy Brown went down to try to get it and couldn't handle it. And thus we'll have set up for Adam Vinatieri about 
a 37-yard field goal. Earlier, Venateri missed one from 39. See, what Drew is trying to do here is throw it low and away so the defender doesn't have a chance at an interception. Down here in the red zone, you have to be really careful throwing those out patterns because those safeties and defensive cornerbacks are closer to your receivers. Tom Tupa holds, 37-yard attempt for Vinatieri, and it's blocked! It's blocked into the arms of Trevor Price, who comes up with the football, and Denver has it at the 35-yard line. Penetration came right up the middle. This isn't anything fancy off the corner. This is just blowing it away up the middle. Price untouched. Blocks it with his chest. What a mistake by New England. Another one. You, you can see right here, Dave Wallabaugh, the starting center, has moved to right guard. And Chad Eaton, a defensive tackle to right tackle on offense and Trevor Price comes right up the middle you have to protect your inside gap and a defensive tackle is not used to being in that situation now Denver from its 35 flicks Elway under pressure and dumps it off to Howard oh, Griffith oh. fullback he gets a tremendous block and they turn what would have been a 10-yard sack into a first down but one of the Broncos is down it's Shannon Sharp who well, got buried by Chris Slade. No, it was the other way around. Well, I'm he saying, actually... but he winds up getting buried by him. Shannon Sharp is the Bronco that comes back and makes the block that springs Griffith. Watch it right here. He hits Chris Slade oh, and just man. levels him, but it is Shannon Sharp that ends up being the player that's hurt. Just a devastating shot on Chris Slade, but Shannon Sharp still down on the ground. Well, Steve Antonopoulos on the left, a longtime trainer, and that picture says it all. At least he's able to laugh about it. So simply his bell rung or the wind knocked out of Sharp. Well, well this was John a, Elway, a wonderful play by John staying alive. And then look at this hit. Just, oh. Talk about team football, coming back and protecting your guys. That was a 15-yard gain, and now back to the ground they go with Davis picking up four or five. You no, know, when you watch the films the next day, guys, and when you're a winning team, you see a lot of extra effort. You see a lot of hustle. You see a lot of guys running after the football, and certainly when your big-time players like Shannon Sharp are laying hits like that and giving up their body, you know that is obviously the mark of a very good football team. What time of day is it, Shannon? <laughs> what time zone we? is this? Like Antonopoulos laughing not only because Shannon's all right, but Shannon has a great sense of humor. I wouldn't be surprised if he came up, came up with something very funny or clever in response. Second down or five as Howard Griffith, a seldom used runner. He's a blocking back, and he's made his living now blocking for Jerome Bettis with the Rams years ago, then Carolina. But Griffith is a guy who once scored eight touchdowns in a college game for Illinois against Southern Illinois. He put eight up against the Salukis, Al. <laughs> <laughs> the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Jim Hart, the athletic director down there running that program. Well, Shannon Sharp came off with a big smile, guys. Looking like he'd be back in by now. He's still got a seat on the bench. And he'll stay there for the next couple of minutes, too, because Denver takes a timeout. 11.39 left in the opening half. The Broncos, the world champions, leading New England 10-7. Aerial camera provided by Southwest Airlines with a shot that is sunset over the Rocky Mountains. And as we come back to Mile High Stadium here in Denver, it's third down and three. Shannon Sharp is still on the bench. Still working out the cobwebs as Elway on third down and three retreats hangs in the pocket, guns it into double coverage, and it is picked off by Lawyer Malloy, but now the official comes in and said, no, it hit the ground. Hit the ground. Incomplete. Almost looked like Malloy got there before the football, didn't it? He timed it beautifully. He read John Elway's eyes the whole way, and he made a break on the ball. 
This is a, a part of the way that Pete Carroll likes to preach to his defensive backs, go after the football, especially if you know where the, where the ball's coming. Good call. You can see the ball coming out before he had possession. Tom Ruin into punt. I give New England's defense a lot of credit. They're keeping the team in it. Troy Brown. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage. And the kick winds up in the end zone. Jerry Markbright. And that indication would be against New England with Dante Scarnecchia shaking his head. Oh. And keep in mind, it's less than five yards for the first down. Offside, number 55. Oh. Five-yard penalty, first down. Oh. That's Willie McGinnis. You know, how many more mistakes can you have before you get blown out of this game? You have to be really careful, especially here in Denver. I can't keep reiterating it enough how important it is to try to play a clean game, and a clean game is the way that Pete Carroll likes to describe it for his football team, and so far, it's been anything but clean. That was just a case of Willie anticipating the snap count, trying to beat it. He got cute, he got burned. First down at the 38-yard line, with 11.22 left in the half. as he makes the catch is Rod Smith, his first grab of the evening, and he runs into the law, Ty Law. <laughs> Ty Law is one of the best defensive backs on the New England Patriots, if not the best defensive back. And I'll tell you, he is going to be counted on today to make plays just like this. Take a look at Shannon Sharp as we go back. He has scored the game's only touchdown, got wide open. Then the fabulous block he throws on Slade. Slade got up, but Sharp is still out. Shannon still on the bench as Elway on second down and seven. Steps up, fires, it's caught by Rod Smith. So Smith was catchless in the first quarter and has caught passes on back-to-back -back plays. Canty with the coverage. And Boomer, what, what about John's movement in the pocket? Uh, this guy is moving like he's 23 years old. You know, it's movement. It's not sudden movement, though. It's controlled movement. He's keeping his eyes downfield. He's finding his open receivers. He's managing his pocket. He's doing what he's supposed to do, set a landmark and climb up. And you could see right here you know, the way that he's doing this. Look at his eyes. They're downfield. He's always looking ready to make the big play. First down at the 23-yard line. Fake to Davis. Elway throwing and making the catch. He caught it inbounds with Smith, despite the protest of the Patriots. One official may overrule the other. Let's see. The field judge and the line judge both involved in the call. And again, you saw a replay experiment that was in effect in preseason only. No replay in the regular season. Pass is ruled complete on the sideline. First down. Let's take a look. Smith does a great job of playing tightrope on the sideline and dragging his right foot, getting and keeping control of the football. Look at the work with his hands holding that football like oh. that, not bobbling it, not juggling it, because keep in mind, he had to have control. Oh. Oh, that was spectacular. First and goal from the nine yard line. Davis with the toss. Inside the five, did he get in? He did, touchdown. Oh, did he really get in? The I don't official know, saying, close right saying here. he hit the pylon. It is a touchdown. Right there, you saw the hands go up as he crossed the line. He said the ball got the pylon. Touchdown, Denver. You've heard it before. The pylon is in the end zone. Uh, but did he get the ball over the pylon? No, guys, I don't know if he even touched the pylon. Well, you don't have... If, if he went over it with the ball... But let's see if we can get a look at it here. Home field advantage in Denver here. Let's take a look. Oh, no, I don't think so. At least from that angle, well, it doesn't look like it. Might be academic. It would have been second and a half an inch for a touchdown. Could have been a fumble on second and a half it an inch, been. too. Are you too spatting? No. But Willie McGinnis, I know that one thing, that penalty by McGinnis was a huge play. Instead of New England getting the ball, Denver keeps it. Davis goes in for the score, and it's 17 to nothing, Broncos.
NFL Monday Night Football. Brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built for tough. Miller Lite, who reminds you that every Miller Lite is sold, ready to drink. And Gap Khakis. 17 to nothing as the Patriots, who trailed last year 14 to nothing in a Monday night game here. Ted Johnson shaking his head. Then they got to within a point at 14 13 at the half, and it was all Denver in the second half that night. Terrell Davis in for the touchdown. McGinnis' his penalty as you look at Chris Slade kept the ball in Denver's possession. And then New England needs something in a hurry. Laura Cullors has had two good runbacks. And his opportunity for a third is negated by a kick that goes six yards deep. That's Chris Canny who actually takes it in the end zone with Cullors back there with him. 9.22 remaining in the first half. Coming this fall on ABC Wednesdays is The Secret Lives of Men. The Secret Lives of Men will be premiering Wednesday, September 30th, right here on ABC in three weeks. Well, what's not a secret is that you can't come to Mile High Stadium and make mistakes. You can't turn it over, and you can't give the Broncos second chances. And it's so frustrating right now, I'm sure, to be a member of the Patriots to be behind 17 to nothing, knowing that you are making it easier for the Broncos to jump on you. who had a groin pull in preseason play and was limited to just two games. The Patriots played five, picks up two. Shannon Sharp, we're being told, has a mild concussion, and a mild concussion these days in the NFL means your return is probable, and that's what they're saying. <laughs> I've had a few of those in my time, but they've never been mild. Yet. Well, I think that probable goes up and down depending upon what happens to that 17 to nothing score. Second and eight from the 22. Pressure. He gets it off, and the pass is caught by Tony Carter, and the fullback is run out of bounds. The guy they picked up from the Chicago Bears to be the blocking back, the fullback, Tony Carter, makes the catch, and it's a first down for New England. You wonder about the strength of Drew Bledsoe and the poise that time. An oncoming rusher gets right through, right in his face. He knows where his receivers are. He straight arms the rusher, and he throws the ball with nice touch and poise. This is the maturation of a quarterback coming into his own. And you can see right here, he does a good job of just laying it off. Hard thing to teach quarterbacks, guys, is to have the poise to get to your second receivers. First down from the 32-yard line and back to Edwards. Edwards loses the football, but after the play was whistled dead. His momentum stopped at the 36-yard line when Cadrez is there. You know, the most dangerous thing about having a rookie running back on the field with you is not so much him fumbling. He'll know where to run with the ball. He has that ability to see things, but it's the pass protection that is the, the most difficult thing for those young running backs to figure out who they're blocking and when they're blocking. And especially now that you're in the regular season, he's going to see schemes coming at him he didn't see in the preseason. Second and seven. Movement up front. Flag is thrown, and Edwards gets to the 42. And then there's another flag after the inception of the play. Trailer was the guy who moved for Denver, and then another flag for a different foul. Well, Trailer appeared to be across the ball at the snap. That'll pretty much be a free five yards for the Patriots. Offside, number 95, defense, five-yard penalty, second down. You know, Drew Bledsoe can really help Edwards in certain situations, too. You know, he's been around. He knows what's going on. In the huddle, he could say, hey, Robert, listen, you know, you have number 53 on this particular play. So... It's up to Drew also to take some of the pressure off of Robert Edwards. You can see 94 jumping right there. Yeah, it's Keith Trailer, Boomer, and actually Jerry Markwright flagged Marvin Washington, number 95, for the penalty, but it was Trailer. Right. Second down and two. A short two. Edwards 
nice for a first down. Stopped by Romanowski. There's an interesting contrast here with Edwards and Terrell Davis. Davis was a running back at Georgia, but was not drafted until the sixth round in 95. And he wasn't enamored with his coach, Ray Goff. But Ray Goff was the coach of Robert Edwards, and Goff was the man who made Edwards a running back. Edwards had been a defensive back and told us last night, he said, I'd have been a first-round draft choice as a defensive back. <laughs> he, was, he was a corner. He wasn't a save. He was a corner. That, uh, that's what kind of an athlete he is. From the 44-yard line, Lexo going wide open for Jefferson. Lone coverage, and he tries to work his way to the end zone and is just short at the one. There aren't words to describe how much that means to New England to come up with a well-executed big play, and for once, they took advantage of what appeared to be a Denver mistake in their coverage. That time it looked like Steve Atwater got hung up inside. He was playing deep coverage, and Drew Bledsoe looked down the middle, looked off Atwater, and threw the ball down the sideline to Jefferson. These are the throws that Drew was not hitting in preseason. But now, obviously, this is a big time, and what a, what a great throw that was. Crockett was lined up there, but just kept looking into the backfield. Now they give it to Edwards, and Edwards is stopped short of the goal line. Second down upcoming. You know, Dan, he was, uh, Al, he was probably looking in the backfield because he felt that he had over-the-top help, and that's where Atwater should have come in and made the play on the sideline. So Robert, not really Crockett's spot right there. There's Ernie Zampezi, the offensive coordinator. Robert Edwards, two hands on the football. He's got this thing protected and covered up. Oh, and I would suspect that we'll see a little more of this. Second and goal. It's very noisy. If you're thinking about a Bledsoe quarterback sneak, remember Drew has never scored a rushing touchdown. Still hasn't. But Edwards has. Touchdown, Robert Edwards. New England had an answer. They came down. Big players made the plays. Drew Bledsoe, Sean Jefferson, and now a touchdown. Gets them back into this game. Gives them a little breathing room, and everybody can just relax a little bit on the sideline. It's not as bad as they thought it was going to be. Well, we talked about standing after that wave of energy. They were down on both knees. They're back upright again. Adam Benatari for the point after. And so the huge play to Jefferson, then Edwards scoring his first career touchdown in his first NFL game. So I like the way this kid runs. He's upright, he's low, he knows where the goal line is, he's got some speed. They really didn't know what to expect. And he's protecting the heck out of the football. Exactly. <laughs> the most important thing. He's got, boy, he's got that baby at a death grip. And when you look at the New England Patriots offense, I mean, they have so many weapons over there. And they have a big, strong quarterback to get the ball down the field. I mean, they certainly weren't, at least before the game, it didn't seem to me like they were intimidated at all about coming in here and playing. Well, I thought they had a very quiet confidence, and it was it was really a shock to us, Boomer, to see how many mistakes they made early. Silly mistakes. Well, you know, once they get over that and just relax and calm down, they can play with anybody. That offense can play with anybody. They just can't have the penalties, can't have the, the fumbles, and can't have the miscues, you know? And, and if they just calm down a little bit, they'll be fine. Patriots would be the consensus choice, I think, to win the AFC East. They won it last year. A lot of people like the Jets, of course, who lost in overtime yesterday. Miami, another contender, obviously. And Buffalo and Indianapolis figure to bring up the rear. But New England figures to win it in the East. They have the most that talent, Al. That's, that's obvious. Little doubt about that as the kick is taken to the end zone by Derek Lavelle, who comes back the other way. His flag is thrown back at the 11-yard line, and Lavelle gets banked out of bounds up at the 37. And here's a break again for the New England Patriots. This will be against the Broncos. Took like a push in the back yeah. that time. Illegal block, number 99, on the return, half the distance to the goal, first down. That is the newest Bronco, Seth Joyner, the longtime Eagle and most recently Packer who came over here the other day in a trade. And I think it's safe to say, guys, has not, watch him right there. He's on the 25-yard line. He's going to make the block right there on the 15 from behind. I think it's safe to say Seth Joyner has not spent much of his career on special teams. 
This is a guy <laughs> who's been in every down player his entire career and hasn't made a career out of being on kickoff returns, punt returns, etc. You know, give him credit. He's a he's a 12-year veteran. He's taken the backup role. He's taken it in stride. He got traded. Hey, I give him credit for taking it uh, the backup role from the six-yard line. Terrell Davis picks up two. Well, the college football season, as everyone knows, is underway, and ABC Sports this coming Saturday will have for you in prime time Notre Dame against Michigan State. Then earlier that day, there are the games you will see at 3.30 Eastern time, headlined by Syracuse against Michigan. That's Neil Smith of the Kansas City Chiefs having his right arm looked at. Ex-Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> well, nine years there and only two here. <laughs> well, there's a little time travel. <laughs> and on second down, Davis up to the 11-yard line. Boy, old habits are hard to break, aren't they? Especially with a guy like that who had such an illustrious career. And it's, it's a funny thing about a guy like Neil Smith to watch him after all those years come so close to getting the ring in Kansas City and then finally getting it here last year. I think if he watched Kansas City last night, though, he knows that those guys are gunning for that ring. Well, Kansas City and Denver, that is a great rivalry. And in the middle of the season, we have Denver at Kansas City on a Monday night. Well, right now, I think you're New England. Gamble a little bit, trying to force Denver into a punting situation. It might be worth the risk. Here comes the blitz. They're yeah. down at five. Flags are down as they jump the gun. And the catch is made up at the 18-yard line by Byron Chamberlain. One of the things that John Elway also does so well is his voice inflections when he's back there in a shotgun. And everybody in the stadium gets really quiet because they know that they know that he can do that. I don't. That might have been Willie McGinnis again, who it was a good call, I think, by Steve Offside, Sidwell. Number 55, defense. Penalties declined. First down. I, rem I remember practicing for the Broncos and our defensive coaches at the Jets, the Cardinals, and also the Bengals saying, hey, guys, John Elway can get you off sides. Be careful. Be, be concentrating on the football and not on his voice. Three and a half to go in the half. Broncos leading by 10. Davis. Half a yard or so. Terrell Davis is a classic workhorse, a guy who, since he's won the starting job, has carried the ball in excess of 20 times a game in almost every game. Oh. That shortens the career, guys, I can tell you that. And, and I know that there are players around the league. I think of Emmett Smith, even though he had a great game yesterday, all the carries that you have. And this is not a running back that shies away from contact. This is not Barry Sanders that's juking all over the place, getting away from people. This guy's taking hits. Second and nine from the 19. By Ron Smith, and a nice tackle is made. That is Lawyer Malloy. But Boomer, if you're Mike Shanahan and he's pounding it in there at five yards a whack, I don't think you have a clicker in your hand counting how many times he's carried the football. No, you don't. And and I think you, when when you're doing it now, you're not thinking long term. You're thinking win now. All football coaches think about winning the game at hand, and they're going to do whatever it takes. And certainly the the things that you know get got Denver to the Super Bowl was riding. Terrell Davis the way they did. And well, I, I think you'd pay more, a lot more heed to it if he were 30 years old, not 25. Right. right. Third down and seven from the 21 yard line. From the shotgun. Elway fires and it is caught at the 32 by Ed McCaffrey as we come to the two minute warning. Ed going down to dig it out and make the catch at the 32. Two minute warning comes with a buck 58 officially left in the half. The Broncos on top on opening night, 17-7. Back in Denver, Al Michaels with Dan Deardorff, Boomer Esiason, and Leslie Visser. The opening night of the 29th season of Monday Night Football. Package that started back in 1970 with the Jets at Cleveland. Look at those numbers, guys. He's right on target. And a dangerous situation here now. The two-minute drill. The master. From the 32-yard line, Elway dumps it off to Davis. And Terrell with a nice move to gain some extra yardage. Picks up eight, gets up to the 40-yard line. Second down. Let's go to Baltimore right now. Here's Chris Berman. 
right, Al, thank you. Coming up at halftime, the debut of our rocking and rollicking top ten plays of the week and a rock and roll classic revised. Joe Walsh, later in the Eagles, has turned his Rocky Mountain way into Rocky Mountain Elway. All that at halftime. Back to you, Al. We hear it. All right, Chris, as Pete Carroll works the sideline here, it's second down, and a timeout is called by New England. Uh, apparently not happy with their personnel out on the field prior to this play, which will be a second down and three. I'm sure Pete also isn't happy about John Elway's ability to continually buy time in the pocket. New England is getting initial pressure, but the initial pressure isn't getting John under control, and it isn't disrupting him enough into throwing an incompletion. Well, they're certainly having problems. They can't get to him with four guys, and when they try to rush four guys, he's stepping up in the pocket because he has a little bit extra time. When they have been blitzing him, he's making the plays, throwing the hot like he should be doing you know it's kind of like you know you you're, you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't do you want to blitz or don't you there's the Denver Broncos number one draft choice Marcus Nash who is not injured he's just inactive uh, for tonight's game and it's just going to be a while until he's in a position to completely understand everything Mike Shanahan and John Elway are trying to do with this offense. How good are the Broncos that they don't have to play their first round draft choice? I mean, it's refreshing. Most teams around the league are throwing their first round draft choices into the fire because of the pressure to play those guys because the money that they're paying them. From the gun, second down and three. The Broncos have two timeouts, and again, New England showing blitz, movement up front. Schlereth looks like he jumped off size a little bit, a little bit of movement inside there. The aforementioned Schler, well start. the left guard. Prior to the snap, number 69, offense. <laughs> Five-yard penalty, second down. John pulled him offside, too. I used to get in the huddle and say, hey, guys, listen, it's on a hard three. It's on a hard three. Don't jump. Don't jump. Mark Schlereth coming to a hospital near you sometime in the future. 21 surgeries? That's what he had. He has. Uh, oh. He had elbow surgery during uh, training camp. He must felt, love football. Felt bad he hadn't been in for a while, went into... Say hello to all the doctors and nurses. Second and eight from the 34. They pick up the blitz, going for Rod Smith. Great coverage, though, by Ty Law. And there is exactly why the Patriots have decided to lock up Ty Law on Rod Smith. That's the type of coverage that they need against Rod Smith, who's developed into one of the best receivers in the league. Absolutely perfect by Law. Two of the best going one-on-one. -on -one. You see Law right there, not boxing out, no interference. And that's the thing, when you blitz John Elway, he knows where to go. He goes to one-on-one -on -one receivers and he finds them. This time Law was up to the task, and that's exactly what Pete Carroll is expecting from him. Last time they needed a first down, they sent McCaffrey against Canty. Third and eight, and they go this time to Justin Armour, and it's incomplete, and Armour pushed off, and there's no flag. The Patriots are arguing. Steve Lofton was pushed by Armour, but no flag. Rightfully so. He said, hey, we're trying to win. Come on, throw the flag. <laughs> So it's fourth down and eight, and Tom Ruin comes in to punt. Now, when New England gets it back, they have one timeout at their disposal. What a terrific series by the New England defense right there. And a most opportune time, too. Troy Brown from the 13-yard line. Ooh, banged down up at the 23 after a run back of 10. And so the Patriots will take over at the 23-yard line. Well, Boomer, you picked a great year in which to join us. As we look at our schedule this year, we'll have the, the champion Broncos on a couple of more times at Kansas City in the middle of the season. And then a game uh, toward the end of the season, gents, that's going to be uh, one for the books as Denver takes on Miami Ooh. in what could be Elway's last Monday night game ever and Marino's last Monday well, night game Well, he already ever. said, Elway already said, you know, I might even come back for another year, depending on how things go this year. But I will tell you this, they are going to have their hands full in their own division. Seattle and Kansas City looked awesome yesterday. They sure did. We ought to have that Miami-Denver game in Canton, Ohio. We should. Save the trouble. <laughs> From the 23-yard line, Bledsoe throws, and it's caught very close to a 
first down by Sean Jefferson, and he did get out of bounds to stop the clock and conserve a timeout. That's as they would have used it here, but they only have one left. Smart play by Sean that time. Again, give credit to the New England defense for stopping John Elway in a two-minute offense. Now, if New England can get some points, momentum is on their side. They go into the locker room, you know, feeling real good about themselves and a chance to win this football game tonight. Second down and one from the 32-yard line. Let's all under pressure, and it fires high through the hands of Jefferson. It'll be third and one. Question for the New England offense right now. Where go with Terry Glenn? Terry Glenn has been absolutely no part of New England's offense tonight. As a matter of fact, I think the first play of the game, they threw it to Glenn, he dropped it, and he has been a very small part of it from that point on. And you see the huge decline last year when he was injured, only played in nine games. A drop off of 90 to 27. A lot of that, of course, because he was injured a lot, but still the, the significant drop off has led so gets the first down and they'll go without a huddle here we got to keep moving used to tick they got to move fast and drew can use the middle of the field here they can even run a running play right here with the timeout that they have on the 34 yard line over the middle it's caught up at the 42 yard line that's troy brown we got to keep it moving let's go we got to keep it going conserve that timeout second and two again he can still use the middle of the field Then he goes to the outside, and that'll stop the clock. Intended for Ben Coach and setting up a third down and two. Now, Boomer, you're a quarterback. Tell me, did he see the coverage on Coach and throw that into the ground on purpose? Yes, he did. As yeah. a matter of fact, he saw that where the corner was rolled up in his own defense. That's why I was saying that you could use the middle of the field. Right. You know, and, you know, he'll learn as he keeps going. He's, he's Right now, he's one of the top quarterbacks in the league. And you can use the middle of the field as long as you have a timeout left. And the pressure here now, Boomer, is you have to pick up a first down. You don't want to be stuck with a fourth down in this situation and wind up giving Denver the ball at the 40-yard line. Plus, he's got to watch the down clock. Right now, there's only four seconds on the clock. So a first down is necessary to keep this drive moving, and they don't get it and don't get a flag either as Purnell is wrapped up by Atwater. And now they're forced to putt on fourth down and 29 seconds remaining. There's that water right there. Ball was low and away. A tough catch, but he has really no other way, place to throw it. You don't realize that is an accurate throw because he wants to keep it out of trouble. Atwater got a hand on it. Yeah, he had his left hand on the back of the receiver the whole way. Tufa launches one, bouncing at the 11, and skipping all the way into the end zone. With 20 seconds remaining in the opening half. Smart play by Darren Gordon that time. You know, he doesn't want to catch the ball at this point of the, you know, the, of the half. He realizes, hey, you know what? If I don't have a chance to run it back, there's no sense even trying to catch it. You have to like the way New England's come back, guys. I mean, they're fighting, and this is the, the way their coach is. He's not a real demonstrative coach. He's not going to be a guy that gets in your face and screams and yells at you, but he will be a guy that will get you to play, and he will make sure that you are mentally ready to play. It really should be just a one-touchdown game. Vinatieri misses a very makeable field goal. If he converts that, it's a 17-10 to 10 ball game. The only reason Pete's 500 is because we lost our last four games when he was with me in the Jets. Mm. <laughs> Are you taking any responsibility? Absolutely for not. <laughs> well, my fault. Denver will run the clock out with 20 ticks remaining. Well, the big play in this half for the New England Patriots was when Jefferson got open. Down 17 to nothing, and Sean got free, and they were able to punch it into the end zone. Otherwise, they are well in arrears. Instead, they're down by only 10. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show, Chris Berman with ESPN's Top 10 Plays of the Weekend, plus the Eagles' Joe Walsh music video tribute to the Super Bowl champion, Denver Broncos, coming up at the half. Our halftime score from Mile High, Denver 17, New England 7.
welcome back to Mile High Stadium in Denver. Al Michaels with Dan Deardorff, Boomer Esiason, and Leslie Visser. We get ready for the second half on opening night for the champions. Drew Bledsoe and the Patriot offense will get first crack here as Denver kicks off. Jason Elam to send it down to Derek Cullors and Chris Canty. And it's a ground ball bouncing at the 25 and hopping into the arms of Derek Cullors who runs it back from the 10 up to the 27 yard line for Drew Bledsoe you might say a harried first half <laughs> early on he was seeking a first down on that run and pay the price sacked there by Romanowski and then Neil Smith took him down and the frustration evident on his face at one point down 17 zip his numbers through the first half but he did throw that pass to Sean Jefferson that led to a touchdown that has them back in the game. No interceptions, that's the key, Al. No mistakes by Drew Bledsoe. Cedric Shaw is back in at running back after Robert Edwards gained 32 yards in the first half. And Shaw swings to the outside, turns it back upfield, and is tackled at the 31 after a gain of four. You also have to think of fatigue for Robert Edwards. You know, he hasn't practiced much. He only played one preseason game, and the altitude obviously is going to take its toll, so they're going to do a little bit of running back by committee here between he and Cedric Shaw. And if they can get positive yards like they did there, they will be in good shape for the rest of this game. Shaw has carried the ball five times for 18 yards in his second down and six. On his sixth carry, he runs smack into Eric Brown up at the 34-yard line. Brown is a guy we haven't touched on very much tonight, but this is a rookie starting for a Super Bowl champion. That has not happened, and he's replacing Tyrone Braxton since Darrell Green as a rookie started for the Super Bowl champion Washington Redskins in the early 80s. Well, Brown, and we've got an injured Denver Bronco down on the field. Looks like Keith Trailer number 94. But Brown at 205 pounds, much more of a physical presence, Al, than Tyrone Braxton, who's in there at, you know, 185 or so. And he's a much bigger hitter, a much more powerful hitter in the running game. And that's exactly the reason that he's starting. First rookie defensive back since screen. Leslie Visser, an update, please. Al, Pete Carroll was happy with the run defense. He said, as for the offense, they're going to fight back one series at a time. Thus far, he is very disappointed with Terry Glenn. Well, as for the Broncos, Shannon Sharp said he was sort of in a fog. He's waiting for his head to clear, but he will play the second half. Al. Thank you, Leslie. Shannon had that mild concussion. So interesting tonight that both tight ends, guys who are no strangers to the Pro Bowl and all pro units, have both been hurt. Trailer comes off. Play resumes up at the 34-yard line. Third down and two. There is Ben Coates. That's Cornell in motion. Lips. Yes, so throws, and it's caught up at the 45-yard line by Terry Glenn. So no sooner does Leslie tell us that Pete Carroll was disappointed with Glenn, and he had a right to be, that Ernie Zampezi calls that number, and he makes his first catch for a first down. This is the key to Ernie Zampezi's offense. This is an out pattern run by Glenn. It's a timing pattern. Drew Bledsoe throws the ball before Glenn turns around. And really, to call that pattern on third and two, that's a gutsy call because that's a difficult throw for a quarterback to make. You have to have the right coverage to have that play executed. First down from the 48-yard line. Bledsoe throwing, and that's caught by Glenn. So all of a sudden, <laughs> Glenn goes catchless for 31 and a half minutes, then makes back-to-back -back receptions. Ray Crockett with the coverage, first down of the 28. The momentum started shifting at the end of the second quarter, and now you can sense a real confident New England offense. And right here, Drew Bledsoe has thrown two strikes now, both to Terry Glenn. I wonder if Pete Carroll said something to Terry Glenn at halftime. Oh, I bet he did. Uh, the reality of it is, Boomer, they can't win unless Terry Glenn's a part of it. From the 28-yard line, it's a four-yard pickup for Cedric Shaw, who loses the football. And the Broncos come up with it. But, but they say that the play was dead. New England has it. The play was dead. His momentum had been stopped, and New England will keep the ball. The runner was ruled dead. Forward progress established. Second down. 
To me, that's the proper call. You could see the runner was stacked up. And really, what all defenses are teaching and have taught for a long time, as you could see them, you could see Darian Gordon trying to rip the ball out. Once they know that they have the runner stop, all the other guys come in and try to rip the football out. And it, a good call in a sense. You could see Shaw even was going backwards when he was stripped. Second and six, Keith Trailer is back in the game, and that's broken up by Crockett, who's all over Brisbane. Third and six upcoming. You know, going back to Terry Glenn, guys, look, if you want to be a superstar in this league and you want to be thought of as one, these are the games that you have to make the plays. You cannot drop the football. You have to go out and you have to become the big play receiver that you are. I don't know what Carroll said, but Glenn may have been pining for Bill Parcells after what he had to say. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> Not quite. Third down and six at the 24. You got to watch the down. You're going to call timeout. Oh, and they have to waste one. And that is a waste. Pete's not happy. 12.29 left in the third quarter. Pat's marching, but still trailing by 10. Ben Coates, we talked about his being injured, and there he is on the Patriots sideline. I will tell you, as a quarterback, that is... So disconcerting to know that one of your big time players is not in the game. You take your eye off of that position, you start looking for other guys. Love it. Purnell is the tight end in place of him. It's third down and six after the timeout. And that's caught. Great catch by Brown. Works his way toward the end zone. Touchdown. Troy Brown. Give the offensive line a lot of credit. They gave Drew plenty of time. It's a perfect pocket. And he stepped right in and gunned the ball. This is exactly the way that you pass protect. You let your quarterback sit in there, give him a chance to see downfield. A lot of credit goes to the two tackles. Troy Brown had been vying for the other starting job opposite Glenn. Didn't beat Jefferson out, but sees a lot of action as the third receiver, along with Brisby as number four. So they may not have a running game. They got a great passing game, though. They and sure that's put do. it back in the game. 17-14. There's the main man of that Patriot offensive line, Bruce Armstrong, 33 years old today. 80 consecutive starts. Oh, that's tremendous durability for an offensive lineman, and of course, a regular in Honolulu. Benetieri's kick is fielded by Lavelle, and Derrick's going to come out from two yards into the end zone. And wrapped up, beautiful tackle of the 12 by Tabucky Jones. Jones is a rookie out of Syracuse, one of their first-round picks, along with Edwards, in the last draft, and a guy who someday will probably be a starting cornerback for him. So far, so good for the New England rookies. I mean, their first two draft picks are making an impact, and Tabucky was a big hitter at Syracuse. Now it comes up to the offense of the Denver Broncos to answer. It might not be points, but you have to get yards, take time off the clock, let your defense get a rest and gather itself a little bit. Shannon Sharp is back in the game. That's the good news for Denver. The bad news for New England is the ankle problem for Ben Coates. His return listed as doubtful. Elway begins with a reverse roll, and they go right back to Sharp, who comes off the bench and picks up a first down. It's a it's a highly successful pass, but it involves a lot of times John Elway taking a hit. And well, he gets hit late there by Willie McGinnis. John looks up Jerry Mark <laughs> anxiously looking for a call, but Shannon Sharp just wide open downfield. But John uh, John has to take John has to take a hit for that play to be successful. Now Smith and McCaffrey both line up to the left on first down. And on the ground, Terrell Davis cuts it back to the left side and gets taken down by Malloy as he reaches the 40-yard line. Give Malloy credit for making a nice tackle one-on-one -on -one against Terrell Davis. Again, we talked about it earlier in the game. In order for New England 
to stop the running game of the Denver Broncos, they're going to want to keep eight men around the line of scrimmage. And you saw there the value of that eighth man, which was Malloy, when Terrell decided to cut it back. Second and three. New England at one point trailed by 17. Now they are behind by only three. They send Davis in motion. That empties the backfield. And Elway throws over the middle. And it is uh, incomplete. Rod Smith never had possession incomplete, covered by Law. Again, Ty Law being asked to cover the best receiver on the Broncos. Rod Smith and Law does a good, a really good job of actually stripping the ball down away from Smith. Again, your big players have to make big plays on the road. And right there, Ty Law comes up with another one. So Ty Law is answering the call tonight, guys. Yes, he is. He's making plays. Third down and three from the 40-yard line. Again, with the vacant backfield. Elway throws. This time he hits Smith, and that's a first down as he takes it up to the 47. Willie Clay upended him. That time, New England tried to blitz. And if you blitz, you're going to leave somebody open for a quick strike. And John is smart enough to see that blitz. And that time, that's exactly what happened. Well, John made the read, and so did Rod Smith. Watch Smith. The blitz happens right in front of him. He just breaks off his pattern immediately. There's the ball. That's the coordination you look for between a veteran receiver and his quarterback. Doesn't look all that simple, Boomer, but you see it blown all the time. Terrell Davis gets a breather, and Derek LaVille comes into the game, and LaVille takes it to the 50-yard line. Tackled by Todd Collins. What great luxury the Broncos have is they have a fabulous running back, obviously, in Davis, but a guy who's clearly a 1A. Derek LaVille at one point was a starter for San Francisco and gained over 100 yards in a playoff game against Jacksonville last December. And a pretty durable guy. He, he's, he's not quite the physical presence that Terrell Davis is, but you're right. He's the veteran guy. He doesn't make the mistake, doesn't put the ball on the ground. He was in for just that one play, giving Davis a blow. Second down and eight now, and that's not scrimmage the one thing I will tell you watching New England they are coming this is three times in a row where they brought a secondary blitz this time a safety right up the middle the backs for the Denver Broncos do a nice job of picking up the blitz but if you are stuck at the line of scrimmage as a defensive lineman you want to get one of your big paws up and knock it down you see right here what a nice block pick up and you see Chad Eaton gets stymied at the line of scrimmage but does what every good defensive lineman does gets his hands up big paws yeah, well, you all have big They have hands, just like you do. Third down and eight. Always swings it to the outside, and at the age of 38, it's still a, a cannon that we've seen since he was at Stanford as Rod Smith makes the catch first down. You stop with the age. He doesn't even look 38. No, but I'll tell you one thing. It's a good look at why Steve Sidwell has been blitzing because the four-man rush of New England is not getting a whole lot of pressure on John Elway. And when he's able to sit back and survey the field, this is the way he delivers the ball. Look at that throw. Yeah. Really, you know, you're talking about two, an offensive coordinator uh, with Gary Kubiak and Sidwell, defense coordinator, trying to play off of one another, trying to figure oh, out what oh, each oh. other thinks. Oh, and that time, obviously, Denver fought right. First down, LA 16 of 23 for 204 yards. And he throws, and it's caught by Sharp, and he gets taken down by Clay at the 28-yard line. Gary Kubiak, a one-time backup to Elway for many years here, now serving as, in effect, the offensive coordinator, even though the head coach, Mike Shanahan, calls the plays. I will tell you this, that the Broncos coaching staff has a couple of coaches that could quite possibly be and become head coaches in the National Football League in the next couple of years. Kubiak, maybe, and also Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator. Isn't... Kubiak, though, in somewhat the same position as Sherm Lewis in Green Bay. You're the offensive coordinator, but you don't get to call the play. Second down and five, unless you never get a lot of the credit. As that is taken by Davis inside the 25, he's tackled by Johnson, and it will set up a third down and two. But you are learning. You know, Gary Kubiak has been there before as a player and certainly as a coach. And you got to give him credit as much as Mike Shanahan because Gary Kubiak's the one during the week that's got to do most of the work. You know, he might not make the, the, the play calls for most of, for the most part on the field, but he will do most of the film work during the week. 
The head coach has got so many other things to worry about. Tenth play of the drive, third down and two from the 24-yard line. McCaffrey in motion. Here comes the blitz again. Elway sidesteps it, but then has to throw it away because the coverage is terrific. Well, Terrell Davis didn't knock him down, but he got enough of Lawyer Malloy that it allowed Elway to at least get out of the pocket and not take the big hit. At least not take the initial big hit. He got hit at the end, but it wasn't by Malloy. Now, he said that he might come back another year if his body feels pretty good. A few more hits like that. <laughs> That's pretty close to being roughing the passer. Collins took a step or two before he actually put his shoulder into Elway. Elam, 42-yard field goal. Tom Ruin puts it down, and Elam's kick is good. 7.44 left in the third quarter as the Broncos extend their lead. 20-14, to Denver. Aerial camera provided by Southwest Airlines. Mile High Stadium built as a baseball stadium in the 40s, and they just kept expanding it. And now it's, as Keith Jackson would say, a big old erector set. <laughs> Where they used to play, Bears Stadium. Right. Did you ever do a game there? No. The way these fans are, they could build a few more upper decks. The kickoff by Elon is taken at the one-yard line by Derek Colors. And he brings it back to the 30-yard line. Well, the fall primetime season getting underway shortly. Coming this fall on Wednesdays, the Secret Lives of Menace, a new comedy, giving an inside look to the art of couch sitting and swearing on the golf course. The Secret <laughs> Lives of Men premiering Wednesday, September 30th on ABC. Speaking of swearing on the golf course, you know I actually lost to Al at Bel Air. I want to bring that up right now. I'll go in public with it. Wow. Boy, wow. I beat him to the point. I beat him to the point. I had an epiphany that day. <laughs> First down from the 30-yard line. This is Robert Edwards. He's back in the game and picks up only a yard. You got to stop using words like that, Al. Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> well, meanwhile, let's take a look at that last drive. It was Brown who scores the touchdown for New England to get them right back in the game at 17-14. But Terry Glenn who did not have a catch in the first half, made those back-to-back -back catches to set it up. Terry seemed to, ignite, seemed to ignite the New England offense. Hey, once you yep. get a guy like that involved in the game and let him get going, he is a big play type of player. But you know what? You have to get it to him. You have to make sure that you're calling plays to give him an opportunity, and then he has to execute at the end of it. And of all things, New England, which had to waste a timeout on the last drive, has to take another, and thus with 21 minutes and 51 seconds left in the game, New England has only one timeout left. They're down by six. Pretty even, all things considered, and the uh, score is close as well. Those numbers very much reflective of a six-point game, which is what we have at 20 to 14. So again, you cannot make a mistake if you're the if you're the Patriots right now. You got the game. It's close. Got a place. Safe and sane. Second and nine. And here come the Broncos. And there goes Bletso. It was Ma'a Tanuvasa. Well, completely unblocked. <laughs> you have a timeout. It's not like he's playing some secret position. <laughs> Ma'a Tanuvasa is a defensive end. And you don't even bother to block the guy. What the heck is this? Well, the problem is <laughs> that they're bringing too many and you can't block them all. But I've never seen a defensive lineman come free in any blocking scheme. Unless the linebackers and the safeties are up inside in the gut and all the linemen will now block their inside gap. And that's basically well, what happened there. I put think. your earplugs in now. In the game here last year between these teams, the New England Patriots blown out of the second oh. half are forced to take another time out here if you can wow. believe that and there. so with over 21 minutes to play in the game the Patriots are out of timeouts preparatory to a third down and 19. I thought the preseason was over. And so in the third quarter with 616 left the Pats are out of timeouts. They ran a a play took a timeout there was a sack they took another timeout and now with the stadium shaking it's third down at 19 from the 20-yard line 
Bledsoe dumps it off over the middle, Derek Colors, and he's taken down to the 29, 10 yards shy of the first down. You know, again, it's got to be field position here. Drew knows that they're only rushing three. They got eight back in the secondary. Just add on to the punt. Maybe Derek Colors breaks a tackle or two. Something special happens. That's exactly the right play for Drew Bledsoe. The thing that is the bad play are the use of the timeouts. And that's what happens when you have new coaches with different players and they haven't been together long enough. Tom Toop, it's a punt. Gary and Gordon back to receive it. Don't hold! Don't hold! Good kick. 57 yards. Gordon from the 13 and a nice open field tackle made at the 19 by Derek Cullors. With 531 remaining in the third. Monday Night Football from Denver is being brought to you by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. And Budweiser, what fresh beer tastes like. That is not a painting. <laughs> that really is the moon, and this punt is coming back. You would think that the Patriots oh. are playing like it's a full moon. Somewhere, I guess, out there is a penalty flag. I sure as heck can't see it. It was on the far side. So a tremendous punt by Tupa, a magnificent tackle by Colors, and they have to do it all over again. And it's wiped out. A similar situation to what we saw in, yeah. the, in the first half when a big Tupa punt was wiped out. Pete Carroll right now has to be thinking mistakes. They are a killing us. The one thing they do know is that they can play with these guys. There's no question that they can do that. But again, they have to regroup. They have to get their poise back. He's had a 64-yard punt and now a 58-yard punt wiped out. This one is a shorter kick. 47 yards. Fielded by Darian Gordon. And Gordon gets wrestled out of bounds up at the 36 by Chris Carter. Tupa arguing his case, maybe feeling he was roughed. In the meantime, let's go to Leslie. Al, of all the people elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, of course, our own Dan Deardorff is one of them, you might be surprised to know that the Denver Broncos, despite playing in five Super Bowls, of course, winning last January, do not have one member in Canton. I guess we know five years from now, though, one guy will be elected, Al. We certainly do. Oh, I think there's a few guys that's, that are going to be elected from last year's team. The Broncos, have they haven't had a, 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 a guy who spent the majority of his career. They have a couple of guys, though, who spent a few minutes here. As Terrell Davis picks up five, Willie Brown, the great Raider defensive back, spent a little bit of time here at the right. end of his career. And Tony Dorsett, who, of course, made his mark in Dallas, also spent a, a season here as well. So a couple of Broncos. And they've had their fair share of great players over the years, guys like Floyd Little and... Randy Gratishar, people who have who have had Hall of Fame consideration, but they just haven't been able to break it in. Well, they have a few guys, like I said, that will definitely make it. And certainly this guy, Pat Bowen, has put together the nucleus of that team. Terrell Davis. Up to the 44-yard line. It'll be third down at about two. This is where Terrell Davis really becomes the key ingredient for the Broncos. You know, they want to run the ball. They want to kill a little clock time. Terrell now has gained eight yards in the last two carries. Hasn't been much of a factor uh, early on in the game, but now he gets better as the game goes on. Mike Shanahan has said that. All the Bronco players feel that, and I know the offensive linemen feel that. What a luxury to be able to fall back on Terrell Davis when you're trying to protect a lead. Third and one from the 45-yard line. L.A. on a keeper. Puts his shoulder down, appears to just have it. You put your shoulder down, you close your eyes, and you hope nobody spears you in the back. First down. Because you're fresh meat going in there, guys. You know what I mean? Big John, though. That's <laughs> Big John. <laughs> you know, that's a little yard that he has to get. And that four seconds of, of play time seems like it lasts forever. You know, you have to like Mike Shanahan. He's making the call, whether his quarterback is 38, 28, or 21. When it's time for a quarterback sneak, you run it. No way. They love that. 
that play. It's, it's a great play to run as Elway gets hit that time by Willie McGinnis and gets up. Oh, and he's upset. Him. He thinks Willie McGinnis hit him late. No, he's angry at the call. He's getting tired of that call is what's happening, what? Dan. I mean, he said, hey, it's not working. Let's stop calling it already. You don't right. think he's upset that McGinnis hit him? No, not at all. <laughs> Look, he's like, you know, come on, this is not working anymore. I think he might have thought McGinnis uh, went after his legs. I'd be angry. <laughs> Enough with that already. Let me drop back and throw it. That's working. Second down and 10 from the 47-yard line. Here comes the blitz. They pick up play. The pass is caught by Rod Smith. A late and flag. he's out of bounds at the 40, and there's a flag down. And it's a hold against the Bronx. Holding number 62, offense. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Now, Jerry Markbright has done a good job over the years of protecting the quarterback. He he was what I would could you know call a, a friend to the QB back there. He used to talk to us a lot. He used to say a lot of different things. Dan Neal is the right guard right there in the very middle of the screen. He really hogtied. Looks like Ferry Collins threw him to the ground. And a nice Denver completion now gets brought way back. It is now second down and 20. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Broncos up by six. At one point in the game, they led 17 to nothing. L.A. under pressure. Chased by a pair of pads and then just throws it away. Third and 20 upcoming. There is David Diaz Infante, who was scheduled to be the starter at right guard. Dan Neal is having to take his place. Brian Habib went to Seattle in free agency. He hurt his knee in training camp a couple weeks ago. Be back in about a month. Willie McGinnis, who was chasing John Elway back there with Chris Slade, not able to get up. And uh, when you look at the Denver guys as they head, I mean the uh, New England guys as they head back to their huddle. It's obvious they're starting to feel the effects of playing up here. It's very warm here in Denver, and obviously it's very high. That's one of the reasons that they wanted to go down to Mexico City about three weeks ago to play yeah. the Cowboys, because of the altitude down there, they could simulate the game. They had over 106,000 fans down there. I would say, what, 99% rooting for the Cowboys? Yes, they were. So Pete Carroll used that as a tool to get his players ready for this game tonight. And certainly Pete likes to use you know, the mental aspect of the game. He, again, he's not a shouter. He's not going to be screaming and yelling at you. But he will make sure that you are mentally prepared for a football game. Willie McGinnis, who played his college ball at USC on the subject of college ball. Notre Dame coming off their win over Michigan, takes on Michigan State in prime time. And there are the early games. The Wolverines trying to rebound. Texas takes on UCLA. And the other games coming your way this Saturday You're right here on ABC. You all right, Dan? No, it's still a little painful. The fact that Michigan lost. You yeah, just, you it, can't it, take it, it. it hurt. But I, I give a lot of congratulations to Notre Dame. They, they outplayed them. They won it. Fair and square. Willie McGinnis, of course, had knee problems on and off all last year. And I know everybody in the New England area a little concerned when they see Willie heading over to the sideline, hobbling a little bit. Hopefully it's just maybe a cramp, dehydration. We'll wait and see, and hopefully nothing serious. Greg Spires comes in in place of him. Spires is a real good-looking rookie who was picked in the third round out of Florida State. Looked very good in preseason, had four sacks. Just not your typical defensive end. He's only 6'1". He's not, well, let's face it, for a defensive end, he's just downright short. Gun, shotgun, third down 20. They have to get to the New England 44 to convert. And the pass is caught at the 46-yard line, but that's all. Ed McCaffrey about three yards shy of the first down when he comes down. It's fourth down upcoming. Really what happened that time is that McCaffrey actually gets to the sticks to make the first down, but he comes back to the football. And that time, Steve Lofton threw him out of bounds three yards prior to the sticks. You can see here Lofton giving him plenty of cushion. McCaffrey goes down, gets good separation, and he's coming back down the stem of his, of his route and loses the first down yardage. But that's exactly what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to come back to the football and then try to break a tackle. Well, the Broncos will at least line up to go for it on fourth down. Will they snap it? Elway looks like he's just trying to draw him offside. He is, and he won't be able to do that. And so now they can send in the punting group. That play never works. 
delay a game. Well, yeah, I've don't... never seen that play work. You know, I... All right, but let me ask you this, Boomer. Why? If you're going to try it against somebody, why not do it against New England, which, who's already jumped off sides about three times tonight? Yeah, I know that. But, I, you know, I used to feel like an idiot doing that. Up there screaming my head off, and nobody ever jumps. And the defensive guys all say, he's not going to snap, but he's not going to. They know what's going on. I mean, they, you know, they know what's happening. They're they can tell. They're defensive guys. They don't necessarily no, they know. They know. You know, on. they're smarter than you think. I'm not well, telling you they're not brain surgeons. Some of them may be, but most of them aren't. But they know what's going on. Tom ruined the punt. Fair catch is called for and made at the 16-yard line by Brown. With one minute and 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter, a beautiful shot with a full moon, and I mean that is full with a capital F. The aerial camera tonight provided by Southwest Airlines as we hover high above the Mile High City. And I'm going to have a little St. Louis pride shine through right now. Congratulations to Mark McGuire on number 61 today. Hit it in the first inning, a bullet down the left field line, just fair. How great was that? That was tremendous. And with 19 games to go, he's caught Maris. And who knows where to land? Sosa, by the way, did not have a home run in that game today. From the 16-yard line, Robert Edwards picks up six as he takes it out to the 22. Hey, I really like the way this kid is running. He cuts back, he finds the hole, he lands forward, he gains about six yards. I mean, they, they have a bright future with this guy. If he can stay healthy, the knock really against him, and he even told us himself that he is kind of a little bit injury prone. But he looks good tonight. I'll tell you, he's running strong. Second and four, the Patriots averaging below four yards per rush in each of the last 12 seasons. Very so far. Edwards up to the 27. We can throw a lot of numbers at you, but just keep in mind, year after year after year in the National Football League, the average yards per rush is always 4-0 or 3-9 or 4-1. So when you go 12 years in a row without reaching the norm, that's very subpar. And factor in the name Curtis Martin when you've seen the productivity that he had the last three years. It, it, that even makes it all the more surprising. Sure. First and ten from the 27. Bledsoe comes back this way for Glenn, and Glenn is out of bounds. Glenn, an acrobat, and he got position on Gordon, but on the chalk. If Drew throws that ball in bounds, he's got a chance. That ball would have landed out of bounds had not Terry Glenn caught the ball. So Drew's got to throw that ball about three yards from the sideline. In some camps, in some NFL camps around around the league, they will draw a line from end line to, I mean, from goal line to goal line, about three yards in from the sideline. And for that reason only, to throw the ball to land inbounds, you obviously don't have an opportunity to make a play there. Half a minute to go in the third period. Second and ten now. Play clock is down to one as they snap it. And that's caught up at the 30-yard line. The catch is made there by Lovett Purnell with Coates gone. Purnell is the main tight end, and he's tackled there by Eric Brown on what uh, figures to be the concluding play of the third period. And there is Ben Coates clearly done for the night the with an that, ankle injury. The thing that's amazing to me right now is that New England's not getting the ball. Uh, the plays ain't quick enough, Al. End of the third quarter, and Monday Night Football comes back to Denver after this. Bronx up by six. Well, New England has already burned all of its timeouts, Boomer, and you can see that Drew Bledsoe obviously very upset about not getting the plays in time. you got to get the plays in so he can get them called and get everybody to the line of scrimmage and then survey the defense. Get the plays in. That is the most important thing. Bernie Zampezi talks to Jack Riley. Here comes the blitz as we start the fourth quarter. And whatever that play was, Bledsoe wants it back. There's no fumble. The play is over. It's simply a big sack by Romanowski. I think Drew is certainly frustrated by the fact that you know, he is hindered by getting to the offensive line with such a short period of time left on the down clock. He wants the plays in quickly, and that frustration just reared its head before the last play. Well, so much of blitzing is timing. Romanowski stayed back, stayed back, didn't step up until the last second. Untouched. Don't hold! Don't! Tupa. 
Sends it into the night sky, into the arms of Darian Gordon. Watch out. A great block, turns the corner, gets to New England territory, and gets wrestled down at the 43-yard line. Big run back after a great block by Detron Smith. All the momentum back with the Broncos right now. They have the ball and a six-point lead. Clearly, our appeal is to all demographics. <laughs> Never too young to become a Broncos fan. I don't know if she can get seats, though. That's one way to get in. As right. Denver has it at the 43 and a six-point lead, the 43 of New England. And Terrell Davis submarines for a couple as we take a look at the numbers through three quarters of play. And again, the Broncos are leading by six. Well, now we got Harry Swain hurt down on the field while we check out the numbers. And Denver now beginning to separate a little bit from New England and surprisingly no turnovers in this game so far. And it's just it's just a case that New England when they get close and they get a chance to come up with a big play. Denver seems to come up with a key defensive call and just overrun the Patriots. Harry Swain getting the attention 44 seconds into the fourth. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football brought to you by Budweiser. What fresh beer tastes like. MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Cigna, a business of caring. And Katera, the caddy that sings. In Denver, Al Michaels with Dan Deardorff, former Siasin, and Leslie Visser as we take a look at the Denver Broncos winning 20 consecutive games when leading going into the fourth. And that is the case here tonight as they lead by six and they have the ball second down at seven. Harry Swain got some assistance, left the field. They work on him. Matt Lepsis takes his place. Lepsis, second-year guy out of Colorado. And Terrell Davis picks his way for a five-yard gain. Chris Slade stops him at the 35. And this is a great way to open our season. And, guys, next week we go to Washington, to Jack Kent Cook Stadium. And, Dan, we take a look at the San Francisco 49ers coming off that thrilling win yesterday in overtime. Wow, was that some finish to a football game? Garrison Hurst in overtime goes 96 yards against the Jets. And what a display of stamina <laughs> up and down, making cuts in the open field. I'll tell you, conversely, though, Washington, Players screaming at each other on the sideline does not look good. There's a lot of pressure down there with the high price free agents. And Ferrat won't start. Trent Green will at quarterback for Washington. From the 36 yard line, Elway throws. McCaffrey makes the catch. Slade turns him back inside, but not until he picks up the first down. Speaking of that first play, after a New York punt pinned San Francisco at its own four yard line and the game tied 30 30, you'll see the missed tackles here. And how long a flight did that have to be for the Jets? going coast Great. to coast yesterday with Bill Parcells in the front seat in seat 1B after this run by Garrison oh. Hurst for 96 yards and a touchdown. And a move you don't see a lot by a running back. What a tremendous stiff arm on about the 20-yard line. First down at the 30. Hurst, another ex-Georgia running back. Two in the game here tonight. And Sharp makes the catch and gets nine to the 21. And Elway goes down. And that draws a flag. And John says, hey, you finally threw one, Jerry. Uh, he's been looking at it for a long time. John has been campaigning for a late hit golf from Jerry Markbright for well, you know, this about is, the last quarter and a half. You know, this is close right here. I don't know. I mean, personal foul. Roughing the passer, threw the passer to the ground. Number 55 defense, <laughs> half the distance to the goal. I, I don't know First what are you. Down. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to just try not to knock. I guess what he did is McGinnis actually wrapped him up and then at, and threw him to the ground after the ball had already been released. I don't necessarily know that you could stop a, a defensive lineman like this from doing 
this particular type of play. Now we know Boomer has made the transition up here when he's no longer protecting the quarterback. He's siding with a defensive end. Congratulations, Boomer. But on the meantime, Only on that particular <laughs> play, Dan. In the meantime, McGinnis has cost his team two first downs yeah. with penalties, and one led to a touchdown. Terrell Davis picks up a couple here. Remember, it was Willie McGinnis who was offsides on the punt. Denver had to punt, and he gave them another opportunity, and they drove on down and ended up scoring a touchdown. So just it has been a litany of, of New England mistakes tonight, and, and they're really, they're, they're only trailing this football game by six points. Um, they have a missed easy field goal by Benetieri. Imagine how much they could either be in this game or in the lead without killing themselves. Second down and eight from just inside the 10-yard line. Elway flipping no. it too low for Shannon Sharp. <laughs> I'll tell you, Willie McGinnis is not stopping, though. He's coming back there to hit him. Well, and he's finally enough of this play already. Every time I do this play, we get stuck. I get hit in the mouth. I mean, you, you can only fool so many people so many times. And, you know, how many times? Well, John <laughs> bailed out that <laughs> yeah. time. I don't blame him, actually. <laughs> McGinnis didn't even get a hit on him. Look at John. Hello. <laughs> I'm going down, and you're not going to get me. Third down and eight. Here they come, the blitz, breaking free is Malloy, but Elway throws to McCaffrey. McCaffrey tries to get in, and he does not. He is stopped just short of the goal line. You talked about timing on the blitz that the Broncos did against Drew Bledsoe. This time, Elway saw the blitz coming. They got there a little late because they waited a little bit. And Elway had enough time and enough presence to retreat, backpedal, and give himself some time to get rid of this ball. But again, another play that ends up with John Elway on the ground. I, I'm hard-pressed to remember the last time I saw John Elway on the ground at the end of so many plays. But you know what's going to happen when they blitz, there's too many guys for the offensive line to block. And somebody's going to come free. And it's really up to the quarterback to manage his position to give him a chance to throw the ball and get rid of it quickly. Does his knee go down before? Yes. yes. He's on. He is definitely down before Ed McCaffrey stretched the football into the end zone. And it's a first down by that much, giving them four cracks at the end zone. He wants a touchdown pass. Look at him. I mean, he's happy that he got the first down, but he wants a touchdown pass. <laughs> well, you'd think right now they... Might have a little dose of Terrell Davis. How about a little, uh, this, is a good, this is a good spot right here for a play action pass. Defenses are going to be real. Please, please put the game clock to 11.07. 11.07 on the game clock, please. Jerry Mark right by the way, 23 years as an official in the NFL, 22 of them as a referee, has announced that this will be his final NFL campaign. The defense of the New England Patriots is going to tend to see to be real aggressive down here. Good spot for a play action pass. First down goal. They give it to Davis and TD for the TD. Good thing I'm not the offensive coordinator, right? <laughs> no, you're just always looking to pad a quarterback statistic. Well, I mean, he did all the work. <laughs> But we talked about it. Fourth quarter, Terrell Davis gets stronger as the game goes on. Defenses will tend to wear down in here. This is just a little misdirection trap play where they bring the guard around Nealon. Terrell Davis gets right up in behind him. They only have to get a yard. Nealon for the conversion. Terrell Davis takes it into the end zone, the Super Bowl MVP. As the champions begin to fence of their crown, and right now they're up on top, relatively comfortably. At one point in this game, the Broncos led 17 to nothing. New England clawed back, but now the Broncos make the spread 13 of 27-14 as Jason Elam. Sends it down to the goal line and is fielded there by Derek Colors. He's had two big runbacks tonight. A flag goes down and Colors gets wrapped up at the 26-yard line by Tory James with a marker down. Two of them, in fact, back at the 15-yard line. And this one is against New England. 
This is where Drew now has to get him in and out of the huddle. He's got to work quickly. He can still play somewhat conservatively. Illegal block. Number 51 on the return. Half the distance to the goal. First down. That is Bernard Russ who sends them back deep into the closed end of the stadium. Coming soon to ABC, The Uglies, a fresh new comedy that takes you from the hood to the birds. Executive produced by Chris Rock, The Uglies, premiering September 22nd right here on ABC. Again, Drew's going to have to be decisive. He's going to have to be quick. He's got to get him in and out of the huddle. He has to save as much time as he possibly can. And down here in the closed end of the stadium, boys, it is loud. Worst place I've ever been. If you're the opposing team. Actually, yes, you are. Loud and shaking. If the camera looks as if it's shaking, it is. The building is moving as Leso goes to the end zone and then throws, and it's a catch made by Glenn. What a great play up at the 29-yard line. Tight ropes the sideline. Gives them a lot of breathing room. You have to remember that Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos, was on the staff of Pete Carroll with the when he was with the Jets. So he knows how Greg Robinson likes to call defense. He likes to blitz down here, play tough man-to-man -to -man defense, and they call the proper play one-on-one, -on -one, Crockett versus Glenn. That's three catches now for Terry, 58 yards. The other two came back-to-back -back in the third. That is ugly thrown out of the end zone like that, by the way, guys. First down at the 28. It's a dump off for Tony Carter. And the fullback up to the 32-yard line for a minimal gain, about three. Glenn Cadrez makes the tackle. Under 10 minutes now to play in regulation on opening night. The Denver Broncos stay home next week, face Dallas here. New England goes home, their home opener on ESPN Sunday night as they take on the Indianapolis Colts and Peyton Manning. Second down and five at the 33-yard line. Fights his way up to the 36, setting up a key third and two. And as we watch this New England drive, gents, keeping in mind his primary target through the years, Ben Coates, on the shelf. You know, that's why we haven't seen him work in the middle of the field. He's trying to work outside to Jefferson, also to Brown and Glenn. That particular time, we can see it from up here. What Denver's defense did is they're actually doubling Terry Glenn. They're bringing the safety over the top, giving Crockett help down here at the bottom of the screen. Third and two and a double tight end set. Edwards on the night, averaging four yards a carry with a touchdown in his debut game. And it's almost picked off. It's a bad pass under any circumstance. Glenn Pedrez in the coverage, but even if it's completed, you're not going to pick up the first down in all likelihood. It's a bad pass because he thinks that he thinks that it's a blitz and he has to throw a hot read. Cadrez does a great job of doping. Bledsoe into throwing this ball. He takes a step across the line of scrimmage and then flares out with Edwards. Give Glenn Cadrez a lot of credit on that. He fooled Drew Bledsoe. But keep in mind now, that was Robert Edwards, the rookie running back. Uh, was he, you think, where he was supposed to yes, be? Yes, he was running. He was a scat back, meaning he was free to run a wide pattern. He was the hot read. Two for the putt. Don't hold. Let him up. 50-yard kick. Darian Gordon. Back to the 25-yard line, and the Broncos have it there. They can start to chew up the clock, and keep in mind, among other things, New England does not have a timeout remaining. They can't stop it. 8.35 to go. John Elway and a 99.3 rating is an outstanding rating, and his numbers are reflective of that tonight. Well, if he would have gotten another touchdown pass, it would be over 100. Good enough for a 13-point lead, and now they can begin to work on the clock. From the 26-yard line, they give the ball to Davis for a gain of one. And this, and this is where Davis takes over. I mean, this is uh, his part of the ball game. And especially with a guy like Elway milking that, that clock now, the 40-second clock, again with New England having spent all of its three timeouts. This is where a quarterback manages the game. There's I mean, Bob Kraft, the owner of the... Patriots he will go to Chicago after the game Pat Bowen will as well they are on a committee that will determine most likely in the next 24 to 48 hours the new ownership of the Cleveland Browns they meet in Chicago tomorrow might have an answer by tomorrow night I think almost definitely out by dinner time tomorrow
tomorrow night we're going to know who the new ownership group is in Cliff. Second and nine. And this is Davis up to the 28-yard line. And Lawyer Malloy makes the tackle. One thing we know is the league will be a lot wealthier and the new owners will be somewhat poorer. And we know that a city that very much deserves to have pro football will know for sure that it'll be back next year. You know, I played up there for nine years and they had the dog pound and I'll tell you, their fans rival the fans here in Denver, Kansas City, Pittsburgh, Dallas. Some of the best fans in the NFL are right up there in Cleveland. Third down and eight, the ball at the 28-yard line. Elway beautifully just lets the play clock go all the way down to two. Then tries to convert. And hits McCaffrey, and he is past the sticks for a first down. His momentum took him up to the 37-yard line, so he perfectly executed three downs by Denver in terms of milking every second off the clock, and they move the chain. And you can see where they're going when they read man-to-man, -man, Dan. They're going right after Canty. They want to stay away from Law. Well, Ty Law has done a pretty good job of taking Rod Smith and any big plays out of this ball game, and when they need it, when they need something crucial, McCaffrey has been there more often than not against Canty. First and 10, Sorrell Davis. And the script here should be pretty simple. Davis for a couple of runs, see what you get, then convert him on third and take that clock all the way down, and Steve Sidwell can only sit and watch. This has got to be real frustrating for the offense of the New England Patriots. You can see Drew sitting there going, you know, if I just could have gotten those plays in quicker, I wouldn't have to waste the timeouts. We could have stopped the clock here. It's still a little enough time left for them to win, but I, I doubt that, that, that uh, Denver is going to turn the ball over here. Terrell Davis, 20-plus carries over 14 consecutive games tonight, 21. And that streak was only stopped because he separated his shoulder in a Monday night game in San Francisco. But I, one thing I think that needs to be stressed here, at least to this point in time, New England should be very encouraged with the way their run defense has played Terrell Davis and the Broncos tonight. They, uh, You know, three times they played... Denver last year and three times Terrell Davis ran wild and they have done a very effective effective job of controlling the Denver running game tonight. You know that could be skewed too because you know later on in the game even now I mean they're trying to bunch up and stop the run and if there's one tackle missed he could take off but they have done a, a, a really good job up until this point. Right. Davis in the first half only averaging three and a half yards a carry. Third down and seven. Five ten left in the fourth. Elway throws and reaching for it, but unable to make the catch that time is Ed McCaffrey, so they're forced to punt. So New England, that was a very key stop of sorts for New England because have, if they convert and you don't have a first down and the way Elway's using the clock, it's that's another two minutes and 15 right, seconds. Right. Easy. You still have a shot here, especially if you get a good return and get good field position. They also could be lining up for a block right here as well. You have to pull out everything now. You cannot play conservative at this point. Here they come. Tom Ruin. Ball's gone. Gets it away. Ruin goes down, but it was just an acting job. Fair catch called for by Troy Brown at the nine-yard line, and that's where New England will begin, down by 13 points with four minutes and 59 seconds remaining in regulation. Next Sunday night, let's go back in action. The home opener in Foxborough on ESPN against Peyton Manning in Indianapolis. And we will be at Jack Kent Cook Stadium in Washington next Monday night. Steve Young, Garrison, Hurston Company, the 49ers, after their thrilling overtime victory over the Jets, go east to take on the Washington Redskins. The interesting thing here is now New England has no timeouts. I'm interested to see how the Denver defense plays this. Are they going to play that pre-bet defense? Or are they going to stay on top of New England like they have done for most of the evening? They start at the 10. Four-man rush. It's caught by Carter. And Carter can't get out of bounds, and the Broncos will give them all the passes to the fullback they'd like. You know, and really, to run play action at this point of the game is really not very important. The, the defense doesn't really care about the run. They're, they're really just thinking pass. They're thinking about going after the quarterback. The defensive linemen are thinking sacks right now. Play action passes really don't work in this portion of the game. Second and four. Let's go. Dumps it off. It's Carter again. And this time he gets out of bounds, very close to a first down. John Mobley with the tackle. 
getting out of bounds is important, but you got to get the first down first. Carter had a chance to get the first down here. This is real close. It looks like they're going to measure. Actually, it's third down. He should have made the first down play right here. He was so concerned about getting out of bounds. But if he would have lowered his shoulder, he could have gotten a first down. Third down and one, so they're faced with that dilemma right now. And running through the middle and just getting it is Robert Edwards. And if Robert Edwards doesn't get it, they are almost compelled to go for it at this point without a timeout. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they have no choice now. They have to open it up. What I don't like, now they're going to their two-minute, finally. I mean, they have to run plays quickly now, efficiently. They lost about 40 seconds by Carter not getting that first down. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Letzel throws. It's caught over the middle, and breaking free is Brown. He's into Denver territory. Breaking tackles, trying to get a block, and finally rolled out of bounds at the 27 by Darius Johnson. You could take the middle of the field in your two-minute offense, especially when you have quick receivers like Brown and Glenn on the field and Jefferson. You hit them in the seams. They can break tackles and make big plays, just like Brown did right here. See, it's just a couple of missed tackles downfield. Steve Atwater had a hold of Troy Brown, but he spun out. Keep in mind, this is not a big guy at all. Now they give it to Edward or to Derek Cullors. He's the third down back in, in, in a nickel situation. I, I understand, but I mean, in, in this particular situation, with uh, the clock ticking down on first down, a two-yard pickup off the right side, out of the shotgun now on second down from the 25-yard line. Get rid of it. Going into coverage and falling down and trying to draw the flag because he knew he couldn't get by the defender was Terry Glenn, third down. Again, give credit to Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator of Denver. That time he brought a blitz. He brought a corner blitz from Drew Bledsoe's backside, and he hurried Drew. And one of the reasons that Derek Covers is in there right now, Al, is because he works the third down two-minute package. He knows the blitz pickups. Robert Edwards would be a liability in there as a blocking back in this situation. Third down and eight from the 25-yard line. Glenn just does hold on and is, I believe, a little short of the first. There he is by less than a yard. Stopped by Darius Johnson. The clock ticks down under two minutes. They're going to measure. Under three minutes. It's 2.56 remaining. And what I like there is Drew Bledsoe went up to the referee, Jerry Markbright, and said, hey, I want a measurement. And that's, a, that's kind of a way of getting a timeout. So if nothing else, play. It, it's, it's a good way, if you know they're short, to call the play right away. Absolutely. So they should be getting the play, and they know they're short. Drew did a good job of convincing Jerry that he wanted a, he wanted a measurement. It stops the clock. Mm -hmm. So now he has to get the play called and get to the line of scrimmage before Jerry actually <laughs> winds the clock. And this and this is a savvy enough crowd here in Denver. You hear some booing but, going but on. But Drew Bledsoe's got to get out of the huddle. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Is, because the clock has started. The only time New England can stop it is at the two-minute warning. It's fourth down, and Bledsoe tries to sneak it for the first down. Looks like he had a decent enough surge. You better hope they spot it yeah. in a propitious position. Again, with these words, Al, please. Well, it's the double P, baby. Give me a couple of years. <laughs> Boomer, it's that Maryland education. <laughs> hey, listen, knock it off. <laughs> it's a first down. You know, I've been getting letters from a lot of Maryland alumni. We're going to be in trouble. And we go down there next the, week. The Terrapins? We go down there next week, Al. That's right. We are in Boomerland next I week. Know, right, I know Lefty Drizel personally. First down from the 17-yard line as Bledsoe throws off his back foot. And that's incomplete. The well, reason he threw off the back foot is the Romanowski blitz. Uh, Terry Glenn's got to read that pattern, you would think, and come back to the ball. It was an all-out blitz. And Glenn almost oblivious to the fact that Bledsoe's in trouble having to get rid of the football. Well, Glenn probably wouldn't adjust his route unless it was a safety coming up the middle as opposed to a linebacker. And you can see right here, Terry Glenn is actually trying to do a slant and go pattern, and he is oblivious because that's not his responsibility. Second down and 10 now from the 17-yard line. Get rid of it Let's now, it's your responsibility. The there you go. It's caught by Glenn. He takes it to the 10-yard line. And Terry Glenn is tackled there by Tyrone Braxton. They can get another playoff before the two-minute warning. That time, they brought a corner blitz. Hey, Greg Robinson's mixing everything up. He's not sitting back. 
He's making his players force the New England Patriots into making plays. Third down and three from the 10. Letso firing into the end zone, and it is caught! It is caught by Brisby, who got position on Crockett. Crockett draped over him, and Brisby is able to make the catch for the touchdown at what will be the two-minute warning with an onside kick, no doubt, to ensue when play resumes. So the crowd has been stunned and silenced. They better get ready for an onside kick. Terrific series by Drew Bledsoe. Handled it, managed it, did all the right things, made the good decisions, and made a perfectly thrown ball right there at the end. Now the point after by Vinatieri is good. Brisby picked a pretty good time for his first catch of the game. 58 minutes into the game. Onside kick when we come back. The lead is six for Denver. Following the game, stay tuned to ABC for your local programming or turn to ESPN Sports Center's Monday Night Football Post Game Show for live reports and analysis. So it's very simple. Either the New England Patriots recover an onside kick and stay in the game or the Broncos win it because they can run out the clock if they recover. Sure does get exciting though if New England gets in. This is this is this, this is where the the receiving team is told if you can't catch the ball just knock it out of bounds. Do anything you can to keep the New England Patriots from getting the ball. And Benetieri is going to try to kick it hard into the ground and get a high hop. Looking for the kangaroo bounce. Denver. Denver has the football. I have no idea what Keith Burns was thinking about there. Obviously, he was thinking about getting a block, and the ball actually hit him. Hit him right in the legs. <laughs> that could have been could have been a disaster for him. Instead, it's Denver coming up with the Keith ball. Burns. Who is it? It's he's he's the first guy who touched it. And McCaffrey is the guy I think who comes up with the football. It's loose. Actually, I think it's Anthony Lynn that gets hit by the ball, number 37. And McCaffrey winds up with it. And number 37 actually gets hit with the ball, and you can see him coming over saying, oh, I got hit with the ball. Yep. I, got, I caught a break. Rick Dennison Ooh, can afford man. a smile, the special teams coach. Really, the idea here, and I, I can understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to go pick a guy out and block, but he gets hit with the ball right in the foot. What an opportunity for the Patriots. Woo! So at the 40-yard line, there is not a thing that New England can do right now. John Elway will just run the clock out and take a victory into the locker room. And Terrell Davis gets an opportunity to pad the stats a little bit with an eight-yard gain. Well, they still have to, to run. The they're still going to have to run some downs here, and, and certainly this is where Terrell Davis is going to pick up a lot of yardage now because obviously when they hand it to him. They're going to be going for the football. You come into a game like this and you're the New England Patriots. You leave this game, guys. It's too easy to say we know we can play with them. They knew that coming in. For New England, it's can we play in a big game without self-destructing? Can we can we go on the road and play at Denver without making mistakes? They're every bit as talented as Denver, but they can't make mistakes and compete in a place like Mile High Stadium. Second down and three. And it's simply a kneel down, and there's nothing they can do. They'll run one more play, and that will do it. NFL.com, new features for the 98 season. Get online and relive week one's action with video highlights and all of the rest at that web address for you, NFL.com. Mike Shanahan, meanwhile, has now won all four of his opening games as the Denver coach. Plus, he won his two openers as the Raider coach in that short-lived tenure. So he is now a perfect 6-0. and oh. And this will do it because the 40-second clock will run it out for the Denver Broncos. I think if you're Denver, certainly you're happy. You got your home opener. You got your victory on the road. I mean, at home. If you're New England, you're sick. You feel like the New York Jets did yesterday. You had a chance to win the football game, and you kind of imploded. You made mistakes, and the mistakes were made by the big-time players. That's the thing that would be so disturbing for me. The Broncos have now won 17 consecutive regular season home games. Haven't lost a regular season encounter in this ballpark since the end of the 1995 campaign. 
And we'll have a chance to hear from John Elway on opening night in Denver, where the Bronx begin defense of their title with a six-point win over the Pats. John Elway comes back. Year 16 begins with a six-point win, and he's with Leslie. Absolutely, Al. Well, the crowd wondered, knew how strong it was for you to come back here. What was it like? What were your emotions tonight, John? I'll tell you what, it was awesome. And it was come back and play on Monday night here in front of the crowd and against a great football team. We knew it was going to be a, a tough battle. Unfortunately, we, uh, we came out on top. It was a big, big game. We needed us to get started on the right foot. Well, you got knocked around a little, but you've never lost to the New England Patriots. Did you feel both offensively and defensively there was no letdown from the Super Bowl? No, not really. I think everybody's ready to go. I think we uh, we talked about the Super Bowl enough, and everybody's excited about getting the season started and feel like we got a pretty good team and uh, that we got a chance to go back and defend it. So, But it started tonight. We needed to win tonight, and we got that done. Well, can, do you, can you say, is this the start of your farewell tour? <laughs> no, not yet. If I keep playing like I did tonight, then who knows? But, uh, you know, I'm just going to start. I'm just going to take it one game at a time and really enjoy it. And uh, I'm fortunate to be on a good football team. I think you made a lot of people happy maybe with that. Thanks a lot, John. Back to you, Al. Well, thank you, Leslie. A reminder after the game, stay tuned to ABC for your local programming or go over to ESPN's Sports Center Monday Night Football post game show live report and analysis to follow. 27 21 is our final here next week. We go to Washington. A good battle in the nation's capital, the San Francisco 49ers against the Washington Redskins. The Broncos win it 27 to 21. Al Michaels for Dandero. Frank uh, Gifford, who was on our post-game show. Boomer Esiason, Leslie Visser. Good night from Denver.